going to stare at Christian and be like, it's your fault. <laughs> Today's drinks have been sponsored by Christian. Thank you. Thank you. This is a really good mocktail. He's, he's good at what he does. Hopefully that bought you Sorry. enough. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Did we, this is going great. Did we buy you enough time, Jonathan, to come up with a good intro? I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Rap Drinks. Uh, today we have a very special guest. Uh, we are joined by my good friend and mentor, Corey Tatarchik, who I've known since I was in high school. Um, she's a director, producer, production designer, all around badass filmmaker, and has been one of the most supportive people to me in the uh, production industry. And I'm um, excited to have her today and hear some of her crazy war stories. So, welcome, Corey Tatarchik. To you. Salud. Cheers. 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 Salud. Cheers. Salud. Cheers. 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 I can't oh, really yeah, move, yeah. so yeah. yeah. I'm Cheers stuck where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> that was after intro. That was, that was a really good intro. Solid. Beat that. <laughs> no, no, everybody has to intro, intro me. Go ahead. Oh Mike. yeah, we all do. <laughs> no, uh, this is Corey. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. You can do better. You could do a follow-up question. To She's this, not from Taunton, and uh, not from Taunton. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. It's hot, <laughs> hot town, not known, dude. <laughs> it's true. Does anyone know what that means? No idea what that means. Pop quiz. If you're from Maine, which I'm I am. <laughs> I know you're not from Maine. I'm yeah, clearly. Maine. There's the right. one time he looks over at me. You saw that? Everybody oh my saw God. that? <laughs> oh, you broke it. I keep touching stuff. That's it. It's broken for I'm Fuck. fired. No. Uh, okay, anyway, I know you're not from Maine. I'm from Maine. It was a hypothetical. Do you uh, know a hypothetical? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Let me, let me Google it. Alan? <laughs> Alan? Two minutes in Alan, can you, can you Google that? <laughs> <laughs> if you're from Maine, you don't say, I don't know. If someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, you don't say, I don't know. You say, it's had telling, not knowing. Had telling, not knowing. And if you're really from Maine, you just say, had telling. That's yeah. it. That's all you need. Because it's true. I if you don't know it. the answer, it's really hard to tell the answer. You can't answer. Oh, I see you what you're can't. Saying. You it's don't good, know. That's a good life lesson. Had there. telling, not knowing. Great life lesson. Yeah. It's actually a very humble response. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. I think I'm gonna stick with I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Main uh, slang once again has confused everyone in the room. No, nah, I think I got it. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm proud of you. I think maybe. So let's Corey, see what Alan thinks. <laughs> Corey. Mike. <laughs> How'd you get started in this uh, <laughs> <laughs> crazy ass industry we call? Film. Yeah, what? I actually don't even know how. Yeah, you I don't think started. I actually know the story either. Because I just ran into you randomly, and then you were like, "Ah!" Every, every everything. <laughs> essentially, Is that how, how it was. was. Yeah. Is that how it was? Oh, go like this. Mm, I got Taijin in my teeth. You did, but it's gone now. Um, oh, how did I get started in this industry? Everything my in my entire life has happened to me by accident. Swear to God, every fucking thing in my whole life has happened to me by accident. I've never been one of those people who's been like, I'm going to be a dentist and like set out a life plan. I'm still not doing that. I'm still, <laughs> wait, I'm still waiting for like the next thing to be like, here's what you're doing now. And we'd be like, oh, great. I needed a change. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's how I got started in the film industry. <laughs> Honest to God. I went to school at Mass Art, our, me and Mike. That's how we bonded. Different years though. Different, way different years. Yeah, way yeah. different. Because I'm an old woman from long long before Mike's time. But yeah, I went to Mass Art and I took <laughs> Super 8 film <laughs> classes <laughs> with crazy people. Fucking bonkers, insane people. Mm. I don't know. It was just Super 8 class. You were in that class. Mm -hmm. It was just ridiculous. I was like, oh, I'm going to scratch my title onto <laughs> my film. <laughs> like, make stop motion animation. Like, I don't know, alone in the dark. Like, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint on film and run it through a projector until it melts into the projector. Right. And then that's the end. And then, <laughs> and then I'm a genius. Yeah. But yeah. did you have an interest in film when you went to Mass Art? Or did you just kind of decide when you enrolled that you wanted to do <laughs> super A film classes? I mean, classes? I had an interest in film. My stepdad was like a film buff. Like, okay. I grew up in rural Maine. I, there was... There's not a lot of culture going on. There, you know, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of cinema happening in rural Maine. I had like weird exposure to things. And my stepdad went, I was like 15 or something when he came around and mm -hmm. he had like records, like cool bands I'd never heard of. And he had all these movies. He had like, did we have DVDs? I don't remember. Mm, anyway, he had, no, he had, no he way. had like, and he was like, 
Have you ever seen this? Like, okay, the first film I ever watched with him. Did, have you guys ever seen Bad Taste, Peter Jackson's first film? No. Mm-hmm. No. What? Okay. <laughs> Peter Jackson's, I, it might not be his first film. It's one of Peter Jackson's early films before he became Peter Jackson super famous. It's a, <laughs> it's like a weird, like madcap zombie movie that takes place in New Zealand. And I, and like, it's all slapstick, like bad. It's, it's the perfect Shitty Riggs movie. Oh. Like all the special effects, you'd be like, Oh my God, that's so fucking shitty, you know? It's crazy, it was the weirdest movie in the whole world, and I was like, what is this? And he was like, "That's that, my dear, is a film. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn. And then we just started, and then we had a family tradition to watch Jaws on Christmas. That was our Christmas movie. Other mm. people were watching, like, you know. Christmas Story. Christmas Story. A Miracle we on were, 34th Street. We yeah. were like, da 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 We were like, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so weird. <laughs> So I just got into like weird stuff and I had this weird group of friends that I was, you know, we were teenagers in the middle of nowhere. We had to entertain ourselves. So we would like make weird movies. We would make like pretend nature movies where like one one of our friends would be like in the woods dressed as something that we didn't know what the monster was or the animal was yet. This is like how we entertain ourselves in the middle of fucking nowhere. You're like David Attenborough. We somebody would be like, <laughs> we're about to see. <laughs> <laughs> the elusive like something and it's natural habitat and then our friend would come out of the woods dressed insane and we were just all laugh hysterically like that's like it was so stupid we were like we're bored in the middle of nowhere we we had bands we made stupid movies we like wrote plays we were constantly it was before the internet guys oh. mm. there was no social media you didn't have to be distracted by that shit. We had to distract ourselves. We had to like make Can it. Can you believe it? It was great. You had to pass the time. Back in my day. Back in my day. Yeah. And then I went to Mass Art to get away from my crazy alcoholic family in Maine. And I did metals. Like I was welding and forging and casting things. And mm. that is. And the... then I went to Saul Levine's class and I was like, wow. Uh, I will say that's the best department. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Metals department. It's rad. It's super fun. Shout out to anyone in that shit because it's cool. Shout out, department. shout out to Mass Art in general because it is like the working class blue collar art school. It's true. It's, it's cheap. true. It's super cheap for kids who live in New England. <laughs> yes. And it's, it's the only state funded uh, art S- school in the country. Yeah, art yeah. school in the country. Kids can yeah. afford to go there. I got into RISD, I got into Parsons, and I got into Mass Art. And so then I wrote to RISD and Parsons, and I was like, where's my scholarship? And they went, (laughs) (laughs) And they went, (laughs) 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 Little girl. (laughs) And I was like, Mass Art, how much are you? And it was literally, it was like, I forget. It was cheap. Minus three three grand a semester. Yeah. It was like that. Yeah. Wow. But like state of the art shit. Like, (laughs) <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, not the film department. Yeah, definitely not, not the film department. Not the film department. <laughs> sure Sorry. The film department was like state of the art in if 1975. You, that's true. <laughs> if you heard Rap Drinks number episode number one, you would have heard my Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mass yeah. Art. No, Mass Art Film Department, not state of the it's art. In a Love basement. you so much. Love you so much. Yeah. But the the hot shop, the ceramics department. Oh, yeah, metal. Like, like, yeah. The best. Textiles. Amazing. All that shit. All, yeah. that shit. all the crafty stuff was like mm-hmm. amazing. So, so you graduate mass art, and what and how do you end up in production? While I was at mass art, I worked at a place called Bikes Not Bombs. Wow! Anybody heard that? of Bikes Not Bombs? I, I have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bikes Not Bombs. Bikes Not Bombs was the coolest, coolest, coolest place in the whole world. Bikes Not Bombs was uh, is a bike shop in Boston that um, people donate bikes because the U.S. What is the U.S.? It is a pile of garbage, and everyone throws everything away. Mm-hmm. So, donated like. $10,000 bike frame would come in, like a hand, like welded, beautiful racing bike would come in, you know, or like, you know, junky huffy bikes would come in. And then we would teach the kids how to build the bikes and then they would get to keep a bike that they built. It was like, great. Oh, that's pretty cool. And, and so I met all these people there and the people who ran the place were involved with the Sandinistas in Nicaragua back during the whole Iran-Contra scandal. And they were like fighting in the jungle with the Sandinistas, right? And I was like, that's a crazy freaking story. Like what? Like this little white lady, Mira Brown, shout out to Mira Brown. She, at one point in her life was like, 
fighting in the jungle with like automatic weapons. Oh like, God. yeah. And I was like, that's insane. And so for my senior project at Mass Art, I was like, I'm gonna make a documentary about bikes on bombs. And it was called Four, Four Wheels Bad, Two Wheels Good. You get it? Animal Farm. Mm. Like, mm. um, <clears throat> anyway, so I did that and I like, I, cause I went to Mass Art where we only learned how to like, paint with light on super eight film <laughs> we learned nothing about production, about production. nothing about production zero <laughs> no idea what it, n no nothing but like the people who work there were like we'll help you figure it out or whatever <laughs> so like i shot 16 millimeter film and the like the first uh i, sh I edited on the very first adobe premiere it had just come out. It was like Whoa. Avid. We had an Avid system at MassArt that no one knew how to use. It was Classic. a full room. Yes. It was like the old Avid, which was like it's probably still there. Yeah. It was, it's like the <laughs> it's like the first IBM computer that took up a whole room. It was the same. It was an Avid, and everyone's like, "What is it? I don't know." Ah. And they'd go back to the, like the darkness with the little Super Steam 8 splicer. Yeah. So I shot 16 millimeter film and then transferred it and edited edited. Edited. edited it, edited. 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 on the very first we'll Adobe Premiere system and made this little documentary. And that was how I was like, oh, I Qu can like do this. Question for you. Did it crash as much then as it does now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. And it was really weird because it was this kid I went to school with who was rich enough to buy it. He owned it. He bought a computer and he bought Adobe Premiere and everyone was like, you're a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I am going to choose one person from the class to edit on this new fancy system, right? And I was like, I, it, we had, to, he's a fellow student. We had to like submit our proposals. So I submitted mine and he was like, I choose you. And so I would go to his apartment like every day and edit my film on Adobe Premiere. And it would take like a thousand years <laughs> to like make a cut. It was crazy. And then... Were you shooting on DV tape? Or what were you shooting on? There, it was 16 millimeter, and then I transferred it. Uh, I, ah, oh, fuck, I forget. I think I had to transfer it to... to, to probably... It, it was a uh, half inch. Beta? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was something like that. I can't remember. And then mini DV was... Mini, you mini didn't D have mini DV. You know it was like two. It was like a couple years later. Yeah, mini DV was like when I got to college. Maybe it was, it was high, like, whoa, mini it was DV. high eight. <laughs> Yeah. Hi it yeah. was like half Hi inch Hi video. Hi beta cam, beta SP. Yeah. All that shit. You know, the big, the tapes were like this big. Yeah. And transferred, but I, like, I don't remember. Like I transferred it somehow, got it into this computer somehow. and Laser disc. Ma made, the, <laughs> made this like movie. And then I, the only reason I stayed in Boston was because I loved my job at Bikes and Bombs. And I was the art teacher at a high school and I loved my job. And then the, the Boston's a horrible place. Sorry, I shouldn't say that out loud. Should I? Say I don't. Want. I don't love Boston. They know for various know. reasons. Bert. They fucking know. I think Bert. Bert. I talking know. to you. Bert. Yeah. It's called Bert right now. The only reason I like Boston is because of Bert. Um, no, <laughs> I had to. I, I had to leave Boston because the all the funding got cut, and I was like, I fucking hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing keeping me there were like the kids that I worked with, and I was like, I, I, I'm sorry, I love you, but I don't love you to, enough to starve to death, so I left, and I came to New York, and I was like, what the hell am I gonna do with my life now? Because again, I, I never have a plan. None of this stuff happened because you just I was up like- and leave? Did you even have like a friend's house to go to? You just I had like... over here on 11th Street. Okay. 11th Street between 38th and 40th, mm -hmm. No 39th. It's mm -hmm. Queens, so it's between 38th and 40th. Right. And it's 11th Street, not 11th Road, not 11th Avenue, mm -hmm. not 11th Place. Those are all in different parts. Of yeah. Queens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my friend Adrian lived there, a fellow filmmaker, Adrian George, uh, one of the few union, female union projectionists. Mm. She has some fucking crazy stories. You gotta get Adrian, because she's like a film nerd. She can take apart a 35 millimeter projector and like diagnose it and then put it back together. Whoa. She's mad. She's amazing. Anyway, so she she had a place in the loft on 11th Street because her boyfriend was a dick and she kicked him out. She was like, come <laughs> live with me. And I was like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I fucking hate it here. And she's like, I fucking hate my my boyfriend. And then we, I moved in and I had no plan. I had no money. I had no idea. And that so I just started sending resumes out to like anywhere, anywhere related <laughs> to like art, 
bikes young people <laughs> bikes yeah <laughs> like literally anything and then this lady from the parks department ariel did you ever meet ariel i don't think so she called me and she was like can you come into our office we're gonna i have an idea i have some money and i want to start a little film program like a documentary program and i'm thinking of buying these two cameras and these computers and stuff and i don't really know what i'm doing so can you just consult and i was like consultant consultants make money yes <laughs> and I went in and I talked to her and she's like here's my plan and I looked at what she was gonna buy and I was like that's all a really bad idea <laughs> I was like here's what you should do and I like laid out the plan I was like if you're working with like young people and you don't have like a tripod you you know whatever I had this whole I I, fig I figured it all out for her and at the end of the meeting, she was like, do you want a full-time job? And do you want to start this program? And I was like, sure, because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so within like a week of moving to New York, I had union dental insurance and like Parks Department employee insurance. And it was at the time during the Parks Department um, when it was like a free-for-all. There was money everywhere. There were all these like neighborhood funding sources where... It was money that had to be spent on one block and it had to be spent on technology and young people. And it, it was only available for three days. And if you didn't spend it and you didn't meet those parameters, the money would disappear. disappear. So Whoa. I would get these phone calls. Up in smoke. Literally up in smoke. <laughs> I would get these phone calls from Ed Feldman, the bursar of the parks department. And he would be like, Corey. He really talked like that. He was the <laughs> slowest talker. I was like, get to the point, Ed. He'd be Miller. like, Corey. You're like, I only got three days. <laughs> no, he'd be like, he would literally call me and he'd be like, we have six, we have to spend $65,000 uh, at the St. Mary's Rec Center in the Bronx um, by tomorrow. Can you do it? And I was like, <laughs> You're like yeah. I was like, have you met me? It was fucking insane. They would just give me piles of money. And then, so I would set up, I would buy cameras and microphones and tripods and computers. We had a recording studio in Sunset Park. Oh we had all, like, everywhere, but I started it in the uh, Al Smith houses in the Lower East Side. That was the first one. So I'm like this New England white lady from Maine. Very cheerful. <laughs> Sorry. Did you decide on the name, or did they have the name for the program? I, I made up the name. Okay. Yeah. What was the name? <laughs> the name was Rec Youth. Because it was we, it was because it had to include recreation because of parks and recreation, and it had to include young people. So we, me and Madi, Madi Sally, Madi, Madi, hello. Um, we decided it meant real, as in R E E L. Get mm -hmm. it? Real. Ah, wow. Real education and communications for youth. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shitty name, but it was like it, it was like a phenomenon. We had an empire. But you know what? It's that's a perfect government name. It was it really is. It, <laughs> it sounds really, like the name of a. They hear it and too. they go, "I know exactly what that they, is." Yeah. They loved it. They loved it. They were like, "Do they literally?" They were like, "Do whatever you want, random lady we've never met before." It was fucking insane. I just they were like, "Here, go to this place. Go to this building in the Al Smith Housing Projects." <laughs> Here's sixty five thousand dollars. Yeah. go to the Lower East Side. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it was it was nuts. Youth. It was just stupid. There was just so much money, and Youth. the Parks Department was like, "Here, lady, take all this money." And you had no, but you had no problem with like these kids coming from the city, and like, "Oh yeah, let oh, me let me get involved." I in did this like a program. really aggressive, um, like like recruitment campaign. Did you make a zine? <laughs> Well, <laughs> funny you should ask. There was a zine produced later mm -hmm. after Rec Youth was firmly established. Mm -hmm. But no, I, the, oh God, the very first time, the very first center, the very first day, it was like me in this computer room. It was like a room where like older people would come to like get, do their resume. Mm. And then I like moved those computers over and put like, like the first, those IMAX, like the, the first IMAX, the, the color, ones the, the colorful ones. ones. The yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I had like a, a, an equipment closet and like, there were like three kids that came in and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, you want to make a movie? <laughs> <laughs> like, and they were like, what kind of movie? I was like, any kind of movie you want. And they were like, what? And there were these kids in the Lurie side at that point who were super into backyard wrestling. You know the backyard wrestling thing. Oh my god! They were super into it. Shout out to Ronnie Bosch. Ronnie Bosch. Ronnie Bosch. 
Ronnie Bosch and Chris Quinones and like all these kids, they all did backyard wrestling all the time. And they had one kid who always worked with them named Cheyenne, who was their official announcer. And he always wore a suit. Hi, Cheyenne. You're, you're wearing a suit to this day. I know you are. <laughs> so they were like, they wanted to make a movie about, they, it was like, they wanted to make The Matrix, but for like the hood. And <laughs> it was... It was ridiculous. It made utterly no sense. But like they had fun doing it. And then they told their friends and their friends so, showed up. But, but how does that work? Do you like just give them the equipment? No, well, <laughs> later on, I was known to give kids equipment. But not, uh, not before a strict vetting process. <laughs> This is a good segue to how me and Corey met, actually. <laughs> no, it was classes. It was like every Wednesday from from four to six, or oh, like wow. every Thursday. So I had I, I did the one center, and it went so well. I did another center and another one, and there were ten of them. And I would hire. They would give me money to hire people. I so, could have hired. I could have hired you for seventy thousand dollars a year. To, what to teach? Yeah, like it was. That was so much money. Is it Rec was insane. Still around? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not it right around. Now? The parks department bureaucracy killed it. Yeah, the government oh. caught. The on. government killed it. They caught on. They caught on. They, and they wanted. They saw they that the kids piece. were having fun, and they killed. They it. did. <laughs> they did. We're helping people. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. I partnered with the Tribeca Film Festival when Tribeca Film Festival was first started, starting to, you know, get yeah, big, cool. and we would have these huge. Festivals. We would have the Rec Youth Festival every year, and all the kids' movies would play at That's fancy so cool. ass theaters at the Directors Guild Theater. That's and like so cool. the Parks Commissioner would come, like all these people would show you up. You probably it was inspired red carpet. Like <laughs> you inspired so many kids, I bet, to do like even if it wasn't film, just in their careers, just the excitement to like get behind the camera and get stuff, you know. And I was wondering when did this <laughs> young youth walk into your life? Jonathan Argudo. Jonathan Argudo, okay, so I had a center in the Bronx where it was really hard to get kids involved because there was a Golden Gloves boxing gym at oh, that center. Nice. And there was the the director of the center was a former NBA player, Jeff, I can't remember his name. It'll come to me. Anyway, so the kids who went there just wanted to do sports. And I was like, you guys want to make a movie? I was like, what about a sports highlight reel? Like anything? And they just weren't interested. And then your t Jonathan's teacher from the all-boys Catholic school that Jonathan school, used yeah. to go to, called me and he was like, I heard you have a program with film equipment. I have these, I have this kid. <laughs> he really wants to make movies. <laughs> and I was like, meet me at the, there was like a youth film festival happening. I was like, why don't you guys meet me at this film festival and I'll meet, meet them all and you know, and we'll, and you guys can just come here, just send them, like, just come over like every day if you want, like, please take my equipment, like let's make something. <laughs> and so we went to the film festival and you and Janavi and Anthony mm -hmm. and like four other people, they were all dressed up. Oh, yeah. Under you guys uniforms. like wore suits. They like they were in church shoes. John John Jonathan John wore a suit. Yeah, you no, were. No, like it wasn't a suit. It was like our uniform was we had to wear a dress shirt, dress tie, slacks, pants, and then shoes. Yeah. Black That's and brown. That's pretty shoes. dope. Yeah, and they were all like. Standing there, like, but we were also this is the moment, guys. This is also the era where, like, everyone dressed really baggy, yeah, yeah. So, like, of course, it was like a dress shirt, but it was like really oversized, shit. <laughs> so, we'd still look like a bunch of hood kids and like, <laughs> like corporate clothing. <laughs> do you want, do you want to tell, like, you you borrowed the clothes, from, yeah, we're from, like, like a your bunch uncle, of, like, hood accountants, basically. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like, you have to diversify your portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had already started shooting. We brought like one of my friend's like camcorders and it was the ones that like shoot to like a DVD. Oh it was like God. this big. Oh yeah. And we were just all like shoot to edit, this. like, you know, roll, stop, record over what you did, get a new take, roll, yeah. stop. And we were like shooting stuff in the park. Like Anthony was like doing all these stunts. Yeah. I remember. It was crazy. Anthony had to do a stunt. He was chasing somebody through the park and he like decided I'm going to hop over this fence. <laughs> To like just make it more dramatic, he like hopped over friends, and then I remember I was like, "All right, man, that was great, but I gotta do another one." He was like, "Oh fuck, like really, you gotta do another one?" He's getting upset because I didn't make him do more than one take. <laughs> Typical director shit. Uh, <laughs> one more for safety. Oh, that was great, but I need another one, man. You got another one in you. Um, and then 
Mr. Regan introduced us to you at that festival, I remember. Yeah. And I was all nervous. I was like, who's this person? Like, yeah. where is this place? Like, yeah, like, what are we doing? So Corey was like, oh, my God, yeah, you guys, are, you seem like busy. You were, like, managing I was a really bunch busy. of things. You're like, oh, you, yeah, you want to You help? weren't the only group of teenagers excited to make a movie <laughs> yeah, yeah. that day. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, nah, another yeah. one, another one, okay. <laughs> yeah, and you were like, yeah, sure, you want, you need stuff? Yeah, for sure, just come, like, come by the rec center or whatever. I'll give you whatever you need. We're like, okay. And then um, we were meeting you. Where did we meet you? Like by like the Chelsea Rec Center, or maybe you had us meet you somewhere to get some film equipment. And Corey was supposed to meet like meet us, give us a camera, give us like a tutorial. Like this is what the camera is. Like this <laughs> wait, is how it works. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This happened before you ever like came to like we didn't like start class. No. <laughs> oh wow. There was no class. Cause you were like Mr. Regan Oops. was just like we, you, his movies ha like, he's already making it like he needs help and whatever, so and then like I'm, I said I, I don't camera. have yeah. I don't have a plan stuff so, just happens just, just so it's me money, Anthony money. like three other classmates we all meet Corey downtown and Corey pulls up in the car she's like hey what's going on uh, so I gotta like I gotta leave town but I know you guys need the stuff so uh, just come around with me and then she opens up the back of the truck she hands us like a Canon. Like mini DV cameras. Remember like, that just, Canon mini DV camera, the white one with the, the long X lens? XL2. Like, yeah. 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 She's yeah. Like, here you go. I gave him one of those. Here's a camera. Uh, here's a shotgun mic. Um, and, uh, you here's know, some just, tapes. Uh, yeah, here's some tapes. And, Batteries. Uh, you know, just charge it. Uh, uh, I'll come get it from you in like a week. And then she just gets in the car and pulls off. I was like, don't break it. Yeah. And we're just standing there with like a like an expensive, it had to be like a eight, like a $10,000 camera. We're just like, uh, okay. Uh, what? Well, let's get working. <laughs> Reshot wow. the whole movie, so Anthony was pissed again. It was like, yeah, so I need to do those stunts <laughs> again. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Mini DV. Wait a minute. I don't remember that that was like the first. We didn't take a thing. class with you. <laughs> <laughs> there was no class. But then you came to the rec But then afterward, we, yeah, then we would take those so tapes. We'd come to, to St. Mary's to okay. do editing. Yeah, we needed a place to edit. See, the thing about me. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of trust. I go with my gut on everything and like i met jonathan and i was like i can fully trust him with all of this equipment like i knew i That's just crazy. knew jonathan janavi anthony i was like Psh. what did you think, think? He thought i was like bonkers. i was like this. this is crazy obviously i was like great this is a good camera also i'm thinking like later i thought about it, i was like i could have just like stolen this fucking <laughs> camera <laughs> never saw her it could have disappeared or also like this lady just pulled up and gave me something out of the trunk i was like i gotta leave town yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this camera hot yeah like, exactly. i know <laughs> like yeah. is she coming back in retrospect, my teaching methods are unorthodox. <laughs> <laughs> I had some crazy fucked up family emergency. I had to drive to Maine. I that was not the plan. The plan was to like work with you guys, but then this crazy yeah. stupid emergency happened, and I had to like go fucking rescue people. Yeah, I mean, but then when we started working at the St. Mary's Rec Center, yeah. you were showing us how to use Final Cut Pro. Yeah, yeah, remember Final like, Cut Pro? Yeah. What was it like? Number. <laughs> It was like one. Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was Final Cut Pro, Pro. Just Pro. One. It was just yeah. Pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was crazy. Like, I don't even know how we were editing the movie before that. You were showing you us were. how to like down <laughs> You were convert. shooting it to yeah, a DVD. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> In camera. God, that's so yeah. shitty. That's how I survived the South Bronx. Mm -hmm. Like, I would leave the rec center at night by myself. People would like people were like you can't walk to the train by yourself you're crazy that was a like, sketchy area I, it was very it was really yeah. sketchy That's but still i was a sketchy like area. <laughs> i was like think about think about it logically for a second i'm i'm a i'm a, i'm like a young like obviously white woman mm. walking through the sketchy neighborhood like three nights a week all alone i'm obviously batshit insane like <laughs> yeah. no one will fuck with me because they know i'm gonna like gouge their eyes out and then like eat their eyeballs because i'm that crazy people would be like what the they people would be like what the oh no no no, no fucking she's not worth it yeah. stay away, stay away. <laughs> she's nuts this is a setup, this is a setup. she's <laughs> clearly <nuts. laughs> yeah, yeah, like, she's clearly yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what would happen yeah that was i think that program was like the real push for me to like i want to do this like this is fun like making movies is super fucking fun yeah and you were so like like there was no idea that i could throw this like i want to do this you'd be like yeah yeah that's great that's a great idea here's how you should do it here's th four different ways and i was like oh shit all right yeah i guess i could do it there was no nothing from Corey was ever like no you can't do that because x y and z was always like yeah you want to do that hell yeah like uh here's an idea you ever watch this movie and i'm just yeah. like no what are you talking about <laughs> it'd be like too much I'm like okay all right i get it i can do it like the, stop the <laughs> way you're talking about Corey is she's just like <laughs> snorting coke <laughs> 
all day. She's like, what do you want to do? You want to make a movie? Sure, here's the camera. I'm going to leave. I'm just really excited. Don't ask my I'm, I'm so- skipping town. Walking through the Bronx just like a week. <laughs> True, but really, I'm like, woo, 10:30. It's my bedtime. She's yeah. like, they just give me 65 more thousand dollars. I gotta spend I gotta it somewhere. 65 grand. That's someone could have came up to you in the Bronx. <laughs> you would have been like, do you want to start a movie? <laughs> They'd be like, what the fuck? This lady's crazy. Uh, I yeah, that's Ooh. pretty much the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I was just really, really excited about youth arts education, Michael. <laughs> Aren't you? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Aren't you excited about youth arts education? Oh, and then yeah. the rec youth, I remember it was the, the second or the third annual festival that that movie premiered. I think it was the second third, annual. Second or third, yeah. Yeah. That that was the craziest part, though, the yeah. the festivals. Because mm-hmm. the festivals, because we, ki- we had 100-something kids that would go through the program throughout the year, right? And then for the festival, which was always in the summer, we – each center would send one kid to be on the on the board to oh, okay. to produce the festival. So the kids weren't just producing oh, wow. their own movies or music videos or entire albums like happened in Sunset Park. The kids would also produce their own film festival. I would like help. <laughs> Me and Maddie would be like, I mean, yeah, like we would. Peop- the kids would come to us and be like, we want to make promos for it, like weird promos for the festival. And we'd be like, yes, you do. And here's some stuff. Make it. So you know how how long did you do this program for? Seven years. Where did you go from there? From there, like all things, I woke up one day and was like, "I'm done." <laughs> like I literally <laughs> was like, "I'm done." It's because, I mean, it does, the, the piles the, of cash. The parks. Dried up. Well, the piles of cash dried up. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That happened. Like, like community development money that used to be like easily allocated. That stopped happening. Mm -hmm. There was just there wasn't money anymore, and then the parks department literally sabotaged the program because the parks. It's a whole story, but it's like a there was a bureaucrat in charge of things, and they used to ignore us and let us do our really awesome thing. And then the commissioner went away, and the other commissioner, who was the asshole, it it was it just fell apart. He hired somebody to be my boss who didn't even know how to turn on a computer or. Yeah, so I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, mm-hmm. I left. But Madi stayed for another year. Mm-hmm. But I just, I just was done. And I had, the best thing about working for the Parks Department is that you get lots of comp time. And so I had four months of paid comp time. <laughs> it was over. What? So, yeah. What is comp time? You work more than 40 hours a week. You just, boink, you rack it up. Yep. So you were like working like 60. Just I like worked all the that. time. I constantly worked. Yeah. And then, so when I was done, I was like, how much comp time do, they ha- do I have? And they were like, four months. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was I'm like goodbye. <laughs> I like split. And then I like traveled around the world for a while. And then I came back. And then, I don't know. I just like, somebody asked me, I think it was a, it was a production design job. Um, Miguel. I used to do kung fu. I used to do this Indonesian martial art with this guy, Miguel, um, who asked me if I would production design this movie, little movie he made. And Wait, like, Cowboy Bear Ninja yeah, Miguel? Yeah, Miguel. Okay. Miguel Drake McLaughlin. I didn't know he did martial arts. Yeah, we used to do... Indo- that's where I met Miguel. That's where I, how I know Cowboy Bear Ninja. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. To me. <laughs> I used to do this weird Indonesian, Indonesian martial art okay. with all these people, and Miguel was one of the people. We used to beat the shit out of each other. Nice. In like m- monkey style or crane <laughs> style, and we used to kick each other's asses. And then and then Miguel was like, "Oh no no no! It was a music video. My friend Dana, who I did kung fu, the kung fu class with, she's a musician and she wrote a pop song. And she was like, I want to make a music video for it. Will you direct it?' And I was like, "Yes, because that's why. That's what my whole life is." People are like, "Do you want to do this?" And I'm like, "Yes." Wait, <laughs> and then so and then clear, I do stuff. Dana was. Dana, kung fu with Dana? Dana, yeah, that's and, how Dana and, and I met. Indonesian martial arts with, with Miguel. No, 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 Indonesian kung fu. Kung fu. It's called Pukulan Tumanji Tulin. It's they too were hard both to in say. The same class. Yeah, we these were all in the same these class. These aren't two martial arts that you were learning. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. <laughs> we were all in the same thing, and Dana was like, "I want to make a music video for this pop song," and yeah. I was like, "Great, I'll direct it." 
having, you're, you know. You're the yes woman. I'm the yes woman. The and then woman. she was like, do you know anyone who's a DP? And I was like, I heard that guy Miguel is a DP. We should ask him. And so then we asked him and he was like, also knew my reel. And we were like, it's not that serious. <laughs> 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 and then he sent us his reel and it had like Ford commercials on it and stuff. And we were like, you're hired. <laughs> 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 and then she wrote the song about her boy, her new boyfriend who was French. And so the song was called French Boy. And... <laughs> And, it t and he is a scientist, and he was studying at the Albert Einstein Institute at Princeton. He's like the top of his field. He's like, oh, wow. he's the, he is the head scientist of the country of France now. Wow. He's like very serious. And Dana was like, I love him. And I wrote a song about him called French Boy. Let's make a music video. So we went to <laughs> Princeton. We went to the campus where Albert Einstein is like enshrined. And we made this ridiculous music video where we're like dancing and performing. And all the French boy does in the music video is walk around and smoke. And be like, I do not care. I do not care. And she's just insane trying to get his attention. And Miguel shot it on mini DV. So you can't ever see it in HD because it'll always look like shit. Mm -hmm. SD. But it looked amazing. And from that point on, it was like... I'm a music video director now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. And then I directed a shitload of music videos. Yeah. That's that's kind of what happened. And I did like a bunch of shitty shit. Like corporate. Oh, the worst. Corporate videos. Lots of corporate videos. Yeah. For like. So on those music videos, what was the weirdest one that you've ever, that you did? Like weirdest setup, weirdest thing that you've ever done in there? Um, so I feel like music videos breed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You well, also probably weren't just directing. You were probably doing a bunch of other stuff too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like how many hats can I put <laughs> yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the weirdest music video situation we ever had is the one we shot in a freight elevator. Did you work? You didn't oh, work on that. Zamba music video? Zamba, you worked on that. Yeah. That was a fucking pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a freight elevator, and the freight elevator always had to be going up. And then if it, if it was going down in, in post, I would just reverse the film. So it just looked really weird. But it, the whole concept was like it was always going up. And there were like people on the floors. Like the, the, it will rise up, and then there's like somebody staring at you from one of the floors as they go up. But my husband was on top of the freight elevator controlling it and like if he fucked up he would have been crushed <laughs> like basically that was i was like please don't kill my husband you That's know right he was like manually operating it while standing on top of yeah. it. yeah right? yeah it was really weird i don't know music videos are weird and then i worked for company xiv forever yeah yeah where things got really weird yeah that and, was super weird and you were mercilessly flirted with mm -hmm. everyone fell in love with you mm -hmm. all the all the dancers were like Gay dancers, straight dancers, all the dancers. Like, you were constantly blushing. You were just constantly, like, beat red, like... Oh. Well, I'm also <laughs> just constantly sweating. So <laughs> <it's> just... <laughs> yeah, we made a ton of shit for this crazy dance company that was, like, basically naked all the time. And all of them would... We'd be filming something, and then one of them would look in the camera and be like, Hi, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> they loved you. They totally loved you. Did you have the beard? No. No beard. No beard. Babyface Mike? Yeah. It happens from time to time. All right, Mike. Whenever I get a new ID made, I shave it all <laughs> off. Yeah. And now you have, now you work with Miguel. Um, they formed a production company, right? It's Cowboy true. Cowboy Ninja. Cowboy Ninja. How long have you been with them now? Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> long I, don't, time. That's fine. I don't know. I've been with them a long time. I was freelance with them for a really, really long time. And mm. then... Um, my husband got annoyed that, like, I didn't have consistent employment. Because you know freelance. Yeah. You're like, you have shitloads of money. And then, like, two months later, you're like, I have no, no money and no plans to make any. And then my husband was like, do you ever thought about getting a job? <laughs> I was like, mm, I've had jobs. It's not really my thing. And then. Whoa, this is the one time you didn't say yes? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I called. He, I, I was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. I, I, I'm like, I need to start, like, I need to finally actually have a plan. I should, like, plan so I don't live in a cardboard box when I'm, like, 70. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's like, it's going to be really hard. Like, it's hard to get a job. Like, you're not going to get the j dream job that you love. It might be not, you know, not your favorite production company or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's going to suck. And I called Cowboy Ninja and I was like, hey, Adrian, do you guys want to hire me full time? And he's like, oh, finally, yes. 
you start tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I, I called Dave. My husband, I was like, I got a job full time. He was like, fuck you. Just fuck you. Your, like, your resume is printing out of the printer. And you're like, oh, just cancel, cancel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I feel like I, I grew up super fucking poor. I was homeless a lot when I was a kid. I, like, struggled. I've had a job since I was, like, 13. I had a hot dog cart in my little town. I was a little entrepreneur. And so, like, when it came time, it was like karma. When it came time for me to be like, I need, steady, I need like, stability. Karma provided. And I got stability. Well, you put a lot of good karma out there, you know? That's helping true. Helping wreck youth and That's stuff true. like that. So it comes around, you know? That's you true. Give trust in people. And I'm sure a lot of the, those, you know, kids now, like adults, have given opportunities and help, you know? I so dropped you off at college. Yeah, you did. <laughs> did you know that? Shit. I dropped him off at college. Did she like throw a camera at you and go, Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go, Jonathan. Here. No. Here's Goodbye, you're the best. We drove up in like your friend's. Um, oh, yeah, that was bad. Fo- like Beetle? Like Volkswagen Beetle? Y- not even. It was like a. It was like a. Pre Beetle? A, a Fiesta. <laughs> Yeah. It was like, it was like not a car. Yeah. And then it was I, a stick shift yeah. and the clutch blew out because it was I, like a yeah. hundred years old. Also, because I was learning driving it because I was like, I want to learn how to drive oh, stick shift. Oh, I let shift. you do yeah. that? <laughs> Once again, going back to you. Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And, and it, didn't, it didn't work that She was after. mad. She's probably, she's probably watching this. I knew it. I knew yeah. it. Yeah. No, we fought it out. We fought it out. She fought was, it out. Yeah, Laura. Sorry, Laura. Kung Fu Tiger Sorry, style. Laura. Once again. No, she was like, you're a fucking asshole. You <laughs> broke my car and left it in Long Island. And I was like, ah, I'll go back and get it. She's like, fuck you. I'll get it. Where did we end up leaving it? Like in the parking lot somewhere? Yeah, we couldn't get it towed or something. I don't yeah. fucking know. <laughs> we just took the train back. We took the train back. Well, you didn't. I you didn't. were I at was, college. Yeah. We like couldn't get it towed anywhere. We had to. It had to come pick, get picked up the next day. What, was I going to sleep in the car? That's no. That's true. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the first time Mike and I met. Yes. Oh. We met on a teen Nickelodeon shoot, right? That was such a good show. Yeah, it was. So what, what was it called? Flip Flops. Flip Flops. Shout out to Matt Semmel. Yeah. Flip Flops was such a good show. It was a teen Nickelodeon show that was like way ahead of its time because it wasn't like vacuous and stupid. It was like smart and funny and interesting. And, uh, of course, it didn't go. We shot all the episodes, and then it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Corey met me, and um, I was super broke. Like I was living in Yonkers, incredibly broke. I think I traveled two and a half hours that morning to get to the van to drive another hour and a half to set for like probably about a hundred dollars. What was what was your your job on the set? Was you PA? Uh no, I was grip. Oh, I don't gripping. think Mike's ever PA'd. I've never PA'd. <laughs> I PA'd one time for you. You did? Yeah, it was on a Donald Trump oh, thing. Oh, God. And I remember you were like, who is that fucking guy you were working for? Donald Trump? You know, he's like... Robert. Robert, yes. He used to do all the VH1 storytellers so, shows. Like- Robert, she got me the job, and I was just like, fine, I'll fucking do it for you. And then Robert was like, oh, we need to lock up this street because Trump's coming through. And I like, I, I was like excuse me, you have to stop. And like one person stopped and I was like, excuse me, you have to stop. And they left and I was like, fuck it. I hate this job. <laughs> and I just let everyone walk through. I was like, I don't care anymore. I like <laughs> That's lockups in a nutshell right yeah. there. It lasted one, like one minute. Yeah. I was like, hold. And then they were like, not ready. I was like, just fucking go. You were like, yeah. excuse me, I care about this. And then you realized you didn't. I don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. So, so you were super poor on this shoot. Super in poor. Yeah. And then... <laughs> You had you had one pair of pants. I had and they one were pair of flannel jeans. lined. Yeah, one pair of jeans to get through the whole fucking winter. Life. And they they had a, a small hole in them. And as I'm sitting there just trying to rest, wait, wait, you're, wait. you're sitting next to me and you just had a pen. And you were like, you resting or were you asleep? I was I was like, yeah, you know, just fucking well, wait, there was wait. nothing you going for, on. You forget it was like fourteen hour day, no second meal. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, was like, we were like miserable. <laughs> it was shitty. What and were they you were doing on it. I was art department. <laughs> you were art remember. department. Yeah, yeah, I was art department. Okay. Yeah, I, I was it, art director. I feel like it, this was or something. during the process trailer shit. Because they were doing process trailer. Uh-huh. And have you ever done this? No, I've it's like done. essentially like you rig it 
and the only people who are on the process trailer, then they drive around for like fucking 30 minutes and you have nothing to you do. Just have to wait. So me and her, like they don't need art department on the process trailer. So we were yeah. just sitting there and then you're like taking a pen and like making the hole <laughs> in my jeans bigger. <laughs> And I'm just like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I was like, I was like, he's asleep. I'm gonna wake him up. Yeah, he's just not, wait, he's not waking up. He's not waking up. And then I just turned into like a four year old. I was like, <laughs> and Mike was just sitting there, just like, uh, I'm beyond caring. Yeah, you were like, I'm gonna write on your pants. I'm like, I don't fucking care. And then what did you write on my pants? Nothing. <laughs> no, you got to fucking say it. <laughs> I can't because it's a bad word. Okay. I'm gonna fucking no, say it. No, she's gotta say it. <laughs> she's <laughs> gotta say it. I like you have to beep this out because it's I gonna get beep. The I entire will get canceled. The entire fucking thing will get beeped, but you have to fucking say it. Okay, I wrote <laughs> on Mike's pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. I did. But the best thing, the best part about it is she wrote it so I saw it. <laughs> like when I looked at my knee, it was the correct way. Because so I was reading. I'm art department. I can write upside down. Did you, yeah. did you write upside down? Did you come around the side and like? No, I, yeah, I wrote it upside down. down. I wasn't even looking. I was like. <laughs> Blue pen. And then it Mike. Never the, came out. It was on my pants the rest of the year. Mike, the whole <laughs> oh time God. you were just sitting there going. <laughs> and it just kept getting louder and then we just started laughing and then and then, and then it was like okay that's a wrap and like i never saw mike again and then like a week later i got a text message from an unknown number that said i'll never forget it said finally got out me my pants <laughs> it was like a typo finally got the out me my pants and i was like what? <laughs> I didn't know it was your number. I had no idea. I was like, what does this even mean? What like weird telemarketing is this? I was like, who's this? And then I realized I was like, oh, Mike Farino. <laughs> and then your house burned down. Yeah, and yeah. then like your life went to total utter shit. <laughs> and now we're here. And now we're here. Whoa. Look at him now. Yeah. Whoa, Look whoa. at him now. Cheers. 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 Oh, sorry. Hang on. But, yeah, but now I'm... Focus. 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 But the next time I saw Mike Farino. Pause for nice, suspense. Nice sip. <laughs> suspense. The next time I saw Mike Farino, I don't know if it was the next time I saw you, but the next time I remember seeing you was when we were on another shoot for another commercial and I was the art, I was the art director of production, whatever. I was the art department, basically. That's generally what generally, you're yeah. just the and then, <laughs> And then she was like, do we have a hazer? Do you remember this? Do we have a hazer? And I was like, we don't have a hazer. No one asked for a hazer. Oh, there was yeah. never a hazer in the, on the list. Like, there's no hazer. And uh, Mike Frino found in the house we were shooting in a box of cigars. And he was like, we got a hazer now. And he, so me and Mike lay, like laid down under the table. There's photos of just this. Just going on the cigars to fill the whole room with smoke. And the whole crew was like, ooh. And we thought it was really funny for like five minutes. And then I was like, I'm going to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. That it was Way. Way, Way K Pun, the DP. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot about Way. Is Way still working? She's in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, my God. I did many shitty rigs with Way. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you worked with Way for a while. I totally forgot about Way. Yeah. Just like I forgot about Alan Kudan. Where is he now? You know? Oh. Right here. Uh, <laughs> oh, there he he's over there. <laughs> he's over there, guys. Alan Kudan's over there. So you're actually the person that connected these two people. Am I? Yeah. I connected you guys? Yeah, it was yeah. at your house. Wait. Was a pig roast. Did I start Shitty Rigs? <laughs> no, you started, started Danger Work. Danger Work. I started Danger Work. Cool, mm -hmm. cool, 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 cool. Mm -hmm. I'm like the ultimate CEO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the pig roast. You guys met at the pig roast? Yeah. Oh my God, the pig roast was so epic. <gasps> the pig roast was so good. I bought a pig. <laughs> That's what you need at a pig I roast. I bought a pig. Yeah. My friend Tom, is who used to be like a hotshot gaffer in the industry, who quit uh, the year before the pandemic. He and his wife, Katie, who used to be a hotshot fashion industry, the two of them quit and moved to Walton, New York, really close to Bovina, New York, and started a farm. 
And I was like, where'd you guys go? And they were like, we're farmers now. And I was like, did you Google it? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> they were like, we're figuring it out. I was like, okay. They're amazing. But Tom, I, t- I, my friend Tom, he likes to make shit. And I called him one day and I was like, I want to have a pig roast in my backyard. He's like, I'm going to weld a spit. And I was like, great. So I went and bought a pig from the like hoity toity pig store in Williamsburg and brought it home. And Tom and I like brined it and then we roasted it for 10 hours, like quarter turn every half hour, 10 hour pig roast in my backyard in, in, in Brooklyn. And everybody showed up for the pig roast and we thought it'd be done by a certain, like eight o'clock say, we were like, food dinner's at eight. People showed up and just, I mean, there were like 75 people there. It was fucking insane. Wow. And everybody was drinking and, and the pig kept getting later and later and later. And it was, when it, by the time it was done, everybody was just wasted drunk. And we <laughs> carried the pig into the house and I put it on the middle of the counter and everybody grabbed the skin, the hot skin of the pig. Everybody was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and just like, <laughs> and like throwing skin to each other. It was insane. The pig was gone in like, 14 seconds everyone was like Fuck it. Ah, starving but that's where you guys met i don't remember that yeah it was hammered yeah <laughs> i was way for big yeah i remember that we were sitting by the fire and uh him and Allie were chilling and um i was already fucking high and like someone i don't know who brought it but someone brought ice cream like mint chocolate chip ice cream <laughs> and we were making like we were <laughs> we took like marshmallows we were roasting it in the fire and i was like putting it in the ice cream and i was like this is the best fucking thing ever and i was like making bowls for everyone i was like you guys have to have this, this is the best thing ever and i was, I I was like that. okay thanks man serving me burnt marshmallow and ice cream <laughs> <laughs> and i think i was like give me something like he was like okay sure um, you were like, it's a revolution. I remember you were high as fuck. Yeah, and you, you were, were like, so you high. were like, John, you need to meet Mike. Mike, you need to meet John. You guys need to work together. Like, yeah. it has to happen. Like, it has like, to happen. You were like, ice cream, and I was <laughs> like, this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream, melted marshmallows. Man. <laughs> Look at that. Then yeah. the magic happened. Do we want to ask maybe um, what was one of your first experiences or an experience you had with the shitty rigs on set? Was that the iced coffee bucket or is that something totally No, no, no the iced coffee buckets. I feel like all of the art department is shitty. <laughs> like I, I, I worked mostly in the art department before, before the pandemic. Like I would, I was either, if, if I'm not directing it, I'm production designing it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then the pandemic hit and I was like just producing, just producing, producing, producing. And so, and I haven't actually done art department since the pandemic. I like all the people that I trained who were my art directors and my art assistants now do that for me. Like Claire. Mm-hmm. Hi Claire. Claire's the best. Hi Claire. Claire is the best. Claire is what just makes, wonderful. What makes production design shitty? <laughs> well, everything is fake. So like you have to make something look magical and real, but you already know it's fake. So it doesn't matter like what you do to get like the f- for lack of a better term, like the front of it looking nice. Like whatever is going on behind yeah, the, it the could thing be you burning see burning behind of you yeah. as long as it looks yeah. good up here. And a lot of times what happens in the art department is like human stands. Like there's so many situations where it's like this has to be here like this and we try a million ways to get it to s- get something to like stay where it's supposed to be without the use of any equ- rigging. Any rigging at <laughs> all because we ha- it has to be like okay, this like cube has to float in the middle of space. <laughs> like with with and it's always like me on a ladder with monofilament <laughs> just like holding it <laughs> over the side. And it's always like somebody's holding something up or like somebody sticks a piece of tape on it and and like you have like 15 seconds <laughs> before. What are the top 5 uh art department tools glue gun glue guns like number one mm-hmm. glue gun is the number one tool you can like put anything together with hot glue hot glue gun i hot should glue. specify hot glue hot glue is the number one tool you can do anything with hot glue i don't care what it is i i've actually put my own finger back together with hot glue <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> uh and then <laughs> just very wait, wait, casual yeah, yeah, finger yeah, yeah. you just hold them up and hold there, this, you can't, go past you can't see the scar, but this the this was a, a, a bad box cutter injury because the thing that I was cutting like fell apart while I was cutting it. And it was like, Ugh! and then that. So I was like, ah, and people around me were like, Whoa, I see, <laughs> I see tendons. And I was like, ah, just give me the hot glue gun and like <laughs> stuck my own finger together and hot glued it. And then I was like tape and then put some tape around it and oh. it was fine. <laughs> 
gone. Because Ooh. it burned whatever germs were on there, and then you put the tape on. And then our, do you remember Yeva from Company 14? Yes. Mike and I used to work for this dance company. We used to make all this like weird video shit for them. Um, and one time Yeva, ball ballet dancer, feet are, you've all seen ballet dancers' actual feet. They're like the most disgusting. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. they're just trashed. She was dancing and her toe split open, like the callus on her toe just like split completely open. And oh. she was like, she was like, oh, oh for fuck's sake, because this happens all the time. And she was like taping it. And I was like, Yeva, have you considered hot glue? And she was like, what's that? Oh. <laughs> and I came over with the hot glue gun and hot glued her toe back together and then taped it. And she was like, oh, amazing. And then that became the thing. Sounds like a commercial. <laughs> yeah. So hot glue, gaff, hot glue and gaff tape. Yeah. Those are like the two number ones. Um, peanut butter and jelly of the art department. They are the peanut butter and the jelly. Um, foam, spray foam. Oh, like yeah. uh, oh. expanding foam? Expanding foam. Okay. Particularly great stuff. Expanding spray foam Which with the one? reusable smart dispenser. The, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seriously. I know, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. That's I actually one. directed a series of commercials for great stuff spray foam with the reusable smart dispenser because I'm such, I'm in a cult of this product because I love it so much and it actually works. I had to make giant feet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture of me. It's I can, a Quentin Tarantino film. Or I can no? send you. I can send you yes, the picture of me in the feet. But we. I had to design. I, we made commercials for Unisom, um, that was supposed to be, kind of like a Japanese game show. Everybody knows Japanese game shows. Fucking crazy hijinks. There, so it was like Japanese game show style set. Um, giant ball pit like. It was crazy. Obstacle course on tricycles with like ramps and people falling off like it was nuts. But one of the things was um, two people raised up into the air holding onto bars with humongous feet on their feet, kicking each other until one of them fell off. So I had to figure out how to make the feet. And the solution was um, scuba fins and then slowly building up spray foam until the feet were like this long and they had to look real. So they look like real actual feet with like veins and like toenails and all that stuff, but they were like giant spray foam feet. And I was like, I, that was the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I made giant feet. Cause you can't find that shit. That's the thing about the art department is like, I'm like, okay, I need giant, I decide, I proposed it. Now I gotta find some giant feet. There's gotta be giant feet somewhere. Someone has done this before. And there's like, no one has giant feet. So you just have to make everything okay. yourself. Wow. And you have to like, it's always shitty. Like the first six times we tried to make the feet, they fell apart and it was shitty until they didn't, you know? And they probably held together like just, just long enough. Just long yeah. enough. <laughs> Actually, no. By the time we got the real, the first two feet, the first kick, they fell apart. We were like, fuck. <laughs> but then by the time we perfected our plan, they were, they were together. They lasted forever. But then you have to throw shit out, which is so shitty. Constantly. Because I can't store... Giant feet. Giant feet. You don't have like a big warehouse anywhere. I don't have a big warehouse anywhere. You so guys have a big warehouse. <laughs> this is nice. Mm -hmm. You put the giant feet so, here. Yeah. So you got oh. hot glue. Hot glue. Gap tape. 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 Foam. Spray foam. Spray foam. Specifically. Great stuff. Great stuff. Reusable. Spray foam with a reusable smart dispenser. <laughs> mm -hmm. Big gap filler. Is not right not here, a plug. Right <laughs> here, no. You can watch my commercials about it. Uh, <laughs> Cowboy now. Bear Ninja. Order now. Dot com. Um... <laughs> Oh God! What else? Gaff tape, obviously. You said that. that was I did. Two. Oh yeah. shit! Sorry. Oh God! I'm starting over. Yeah. <sighs> I'm under pressure. Um. Okay. Hot glue. Uh -huh. yep. for, this is for the edit. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna cut all that shit out, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. You just Everybody ask just, me for the first time. Okay. So, um, what are your? <laughs> <laughs> hot glue. Particularly the European hot glue gun, which you have to get the special adapter for because it has a tiny, <laughs> tiny nozzle. I'm telling you, it's the Mercedes of hot glue guns. Hot glue, gaff tape, spray foam. The other two, monofilament. Yeah, that's. I was <laughs> waiting for you to fucking say monofilament. Just it. everything is made. That's so art. Monofilament. monofilament. Fishing line. Okay. It's a clear, like clear line. You can barely line. see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They hold every fucking thing up. But I feel like you guys are constantly like, hot glue, monofilament, hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you want to be in the art department? I feel like you have it Iron. all figured yeah. out. That's got to be the question you ask them. Like, what are the top five things you do in the art yeah, department? Yeah, exactly. That's true. People all from art department always ask me, like, what's the essential in your kit? And that's, like, 
Those are those are the, those are the lit. Well, then the, we, then there's more. We got one more. You need. I know, more. I know, I know. I gotta think. I gotta think. It's like no a scissors, no knife. No. Well, a knife, but like, like everybody shiny. has a knife. It, everybody like, has a knife. Okay. You know, like I feel like <laughs> everyone on set has a knife of some sort. Maybe two. Or three <laughs> yeah. or four. Yeah. I I always have this knife <laughs> around my neck yeah, that my friend Claire, art department, gave me. Look at that. It's good for stabbing people because you can't kill them. You can just hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> while, while it's on your neck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get, get closer for me. Get, get closer. Little, little, come here, Mike. Come here. <laughs> I'll take a taste. There you go. Ooh, See? Good. It's pretty good. It's nice. Claire Gilbertson gave this to glue, me for my birthday. Gun. Yeah, Claire. Put some yeah. glue gun on that. What else? What else? What's the other, like... Measuring tape. Mm, no, that's measuring basic tape. shit. Sh- basic. Um, it's like art department <laughs> I mean, specific. I art department specific stuff. Like if I asked a dolly, they'd be like, cor- you know, cornstarch and shit like that. You know? Velcro is Velcro. Like stuff. Velcro's the up other, there. Like That's that like an AC stuff. thing. Oh, there's that 3M stuff that lets Blu-tack. you mount shit on the Blu-tack. walls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like those, for frames. Yeah, those. What are those fucking things called? Oh my god, what are they called? Oh, they. My the brain. Hang? Yeah, uh, you just stick them. Blink. They're called something, and I can't remember. 3M. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking. Pull the little tab and. What is wrong with me? Can uh, I call up? Can strips. I phone a friend? What? Command strips. Thank you so much. <laughs> command strips. Mm-hmm. But I came up before command strips were invented. We didn't have the. There were no command strips. Those things didn't exist. Mm. We had to figure out other ways to do it. It was like always monofilament. <laughs> like <laughs> always. Monofilament. Always. On a ladder, just monofilament. Yeah. I've made so much custom artwork for shots too, because you can't clear artwork. Because uh, cleared artwork is like good cleared artwork is super expensive. Mm-hmm. Wow, I just made it seem like I'm a really good artist. Good cleared artwork is really expensive. So like, the, there's always a shot where they're like, "Can we get a piece of artwork here?" And I'm like, "Do you have money?" And they're like, "No." So then I end up like going and getting some like foam core and like drawing a bird. <laughs> Or like a stick <laughs> with a leaf or something abstract and putting it in the background. So much of my artwork is in the background of, of commercials because they never want to pay for cleared artwork. <laughs> it's true. That's what our department does. We lie. Lie. <laughs> lie and lie and lie. Deceit. Yeah. Yep. Make the shot happen, honestly. Do what it takes. There's like yeah. an awkward pause going on. Well, guys. I need one more. You only oh, gave fuck. me four. I did. That's oh, problem. hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, the command ships thing doesn't I fall just, as a fit. I just like, <sighs> you don't want to end on that. I don't know. Those are all so good. Like, oh my God, I got it. Fun? Yeah. Zip ties. Are, wait, do we want to start ties. over? Okay. Yeah, I can it's see zip that. Ties. Oh, zip ties. Yeah. Zip ties. <laughs> tape wise, I mean, like, I know a bunch of <laughs> tape. What, what's your favorite tape? <laughs> What are you into? Tape. <laughs> what are you into? <laughs> what kind of tape are you into? Yeah, is that a pickup line? You're like, what kind of tape are you into? <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm in Waiting for Guffman now, and I'm naming nuts. <laughs> you know, where he's like pine nuts, hazel nuts, Brazil nuts. <laughs> I'm like scotch tape, gaff tape, duct tape. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm I'm really I'm I'm really into painters tape these days. Mm, snot tape, snot tape all the time. Uh, for the art department, painters tape is essential, Michael. Why? It's just paper tape. Because it doesn't stick permanently permanently to things. Yeah, it doesn't damage. Shit. It's very important for the art department. Yeah, I know. Genie you, doesn't really care about damage. Yeah, you saying. don't care about damage at all. There's no wire oh, cable there. Pff, like, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Blow out that wall, put a hole right through it. It's true. You have to have multicolored tape to cover up things to make it look like tape. You have to Greek everything. You have to like cover up yeah. logos with everything. The last shoot I was on, I had to like basically what? make a new sneaker. I had to like design my own sneaker and it was just all tape because it couldn't look like Usually you get dummy shoes. You get like non-logo shoes, but they got lost in the mail. So we had to like go buy some shoes and they were vans. So I had to like take the whole this whole all part. Thing. This whole part is like my new design, my new type of Sneaker. It's launching next year. What do you call them? Oh, breezies. <laughs> breezies. Four hundred dollars. Sounds like what my grandmother called farts. <laughs> Breezy. <laughs> <laughs> she actually called farts. Uh, she would say, "Oops, I shot a bunny." That was what my grandmother said when she would she would rip a huge fart and she'd go, ha, "I shot a bunny." And we'd be like, "Grammy." <laughs> It's true, oh, Louise. Man. She was a classy broad. So aside from the aside from the big feet, 
uh, that you had to make for that Japanese game show? Did you ever have a situation where you made a prop and it just went to shit, fell apart? The That same shoot, there was a tricycle obstacle course that had like multiple ramps um, and like two tracks. And the people on the bicycle, obs- on the tricycles had to have a giant iced coffee balanced on their heads. And you would think like, oh, giant iced coffee, just get like a really big, like a venti. Yeah. But the client was like, no, 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 no. Can you make it like giant? And I was like, not without like neck damage. You can't just like put that much weight on someone's head. Yeah. Like, and they didn't want them to wear helmets. So I couldn't attach anything to a helmet. They wanted it to look like it was, it, they wanted it to look like it was balancing, right? Which is super hard to do. Like you need tricks to do that. Like they have to wear a wig and yeah, like monofilament. <laughs> You're gonna need some hot glue directly <laughs> to the scalp. <laughs> But they were like, no, we want it to be big. And so we got these like, there's there's no, there's there's a right way to do it, which involves money, yeah. which there wasn't enough money. Mm. It involves money and time and there was no money and there was no time. Never there was. wasn't enough money and there wasn't enough time. This is where shitty rigs are born. This is, yeah. shitty rigs were born in this, in this In this capacity. little void. The, it's like the Venn diagram of shitty rig. It's yeah. like not enough money, no money, not enough time and people who don't. <laughs> care to listen to your thought process yeah. it's like shitty rig and people are like <laughs> um can you make it bigger great um so the right way to do it would be to have how do i describe this a hollow like a hollow center a hollow center okay and so there's liquid like a thin layer of liquid around the outside okay right right, right? Yeah, yeah. So it looks like how like... the toy baby right. bottles are made yeah yes yeah. toy baby bottles exactly okay. right. because the in at the end of the gag one of them falls off and the coffee spills and they wanted it to be a continuous shot so we couldn't just like put a fake coffee and they were getting these close-ups of the coffee like moving around it had to be liquid and ice had to be in there so i had fake ice which did i ever give you the fake ice back you gave it to us for a week and then you took it back <laughs> you're like hey i don't need this, this. i'll get it back to you at yeah. some point <laughs> anyway so there would have been if i could, if i had money and time i would have had somebody fabricate yeah. a hollow giant coffee cup that mm-hmm. had like a bit giant straw and like room for a little bit of liquid and it would have been mounted on a wig that would have been secured to the head but we had like four days to do the entire thing it was like last minute and uh how many cups and for how many people two okay but it was two people racing but then like we found these clear buckets and we were like we're making our own hollow core and it was like so much fucking hot glue (laughs) we were like (laughs) (laughs) like, we put we put and it couldn't be heavy so we couldn't put anything heavy in so we had foam and hot glue are you learning things it's two two and five and i'm sure that there's like art directors out there list or prop designers out there right now listening to this being like what a fucking idiot yes Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> we know. But I had like a whole team and we were like all doing different things. And we had giant feet to make. We had like huge ball pits to make. We had tons of shit to do. And like we were like the coffee cup. I knew from the beginning. I was like the coffee cup will be our greatest challenge. Mark my words. And so we built this thing. So it had a layer of liquid on the outside and it was mo- it was foam in the middle. So it didn't weigh anything. And you could see the liquid and the ice was in there and the cap was on and the straw. And we were like, oh, we fucking did it. And it like weighed nothing and it looked real. And we like attached it to their heads with these headbands that would like, like their hair would cover it up from the hair and makeup department. And they had a chin strap that was the flesh, the same color as their flesh. Wow. And it was like, yay, it's working. And then the very first like, it was like, take one, action. They both of them just exploded. <laughs> like, both just <laughs> fell apart. They both were like, we're riding our tricycle. And they both, they just like went, oh. and then just everything spilled. And the foam popped out, like flew across the room. And the client was like, can we reset that? And like, the executive producer was like, like the client, all the client, all the agency and all the client, they all came to me. And I was like, on the walkie, I could see them coming toward me and I got on the walkie to the executive producer and I was like, we need a buffer. You gotta get over here. 
put your suit jacket on. <laughs> like, we need a buffer. And, like, Rufus put on his suit jacket and came over and was like, hey, everybody, we're going to go uh, craft or blah, 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 something to get, just get them away from me. And then the whole art department, we were like, what do we do? And everyone was like, I, I'm out of ideas. We had no, we had, like, zero, zero, zero ideas. And we were almost completely fucked. But then we just, like, rebuilt them the way we had built them and prayed. And they lasted for two takes, and then that was it. It was crazy. I was like, you can't. They were like, can't you just fill a bucket with water and put it on their head? And I was like, no, it's it weighs like 20 pounds. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't do that. On the tricycle. <laughs> they were like small dudes, too. They were like little nerdy dudes who were like super cute. And I didn't want to hurt them. No neck muscles. <laughs> no neck muscles. It was bad. No ears. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> the gym, man, just pumping that neck muscle. Is that, is that what you do? You just put a bucket yeah, put of coffee a, on your head and you just fucking see, go? You see how they pull cat, like cattle and you just put it around the neck? Just, you know, just, you know, on the gym, just pushing. That's interesting. Pumping right, yeah. It just all comes down to unrealistic client expectations. All the time. Well, I think that's also like, you know, you got to put those expectations into a box. What are you saying, Mike? I said that's probably like a, the producer <laughs> being like, yeah, we can do that. No problem. Mm -hmm. Just nodding. Yep. That is Producers true. saying yes when they should. Oh, ice, ice coffee bucket on their head? Yeah, no problem. We can do that. Totally. We got someone who knows how to do that. And then mm -hmm. they go, then they go, Corey, can you do that? And you're like, what? <laughs> Why was I involved in this conversation? I know. I'm always like, please don't throw me under the bus. Please don't. Please. So the, oh. They threw me under the bus. <laughs> And then you're under the bus. You're like, hot glue, hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like healing, healing yeah. my wounds in real time. That's, like, oh, my God. Totally oh. Yeah. The bus hits you, and then you're like, hot glue, zip ties, <laughs> modern filter. Oh, bus. Her, her next job is going to be a paramedic on scene, on set. Just, yeah, I got some hot glue. Come over here. Just. I feel like I'm a paramedic on set quite often. It happens. I mean, that's kind of what that role is. Yeah. You're essentially like putting this together. You're like... It's not going to hold for long, but it'll exactly. get us to the next That's thing. That's the thing. It's yeah. not going to hold for long. And as long as you can get like two shots, out, two takes out of it, you're good. Mm -hmm. That was a little the work and a little prayer. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, it's, and then it's garbage in the dumpster, like mm -hmm. everything else, which is terrible and sad. There have to be some trophies you get to take home, though. I've taken, I used to take lots of trophies home, mm -hmm. but then I stopped. <laughs> What is that's actually a really good question. Like, what's the best trophy or something you took that was like really proud of your your um, creation? Uh, <laughs> I like don't care anymore, so I'm like, oh, yeah, You're like, it's all trash. My, <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 the feet were great. The feet, like, you'll you'll put you'll put the picture up of it's like Corey at her, in, at her happiest moment. Besides, like, you know, like life things like wedding and things like that <laughs> like after, in her happiest moment on set yeah, after wedding is the feet yeah, yeah like the giant, the giant, the giant. After the wedding, i've like made feet. custom neon signs that are really yeah, cool that's and what you, yeah. oh my god remember when we made the game show and the neon signs were the when the buzzer when they rang the buzzer and i was like mike mm -hmm. <laughs> i love neon signs for this they were like neon dollar signs or something I can't remember. The game podiums, you know? You're supposed to hit the buzzer and like a light comes up. But of course me, I was like, I want them to be neon and there can't be any delay because it's a game show buzzer. And neon's delay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you figured it out. Probably. Yeah, that was a total fucking shitty rig. I was like, don't go back there. You don't want to see <laughs> how I'm doing this. I was like, something's burning. <laughs> yeah. You Mike was back there. Like, how it's happening. He was like soldering back there and swearing. Soldering and swearing. The Mike Carino story. <laughs> Like cursing. His memoirs. Yeah. It's his memoir. Soldering and swearing. And Mike like always has a friend who's like a nerd at like some weird like VR or like Radio Shack or something. I feel like you are Radio Shack. <laughs> actually, out of business? actually, it's very interesting because when Radio Shack went out of business, I bought out like everything. <laughs> they, Seriously. When they were going out of business, they called Mike and asked if he wanted to have I remember shots. you being really happy. You're like, I just went there and I got all this shit for like <laughs> no never, money. You never know when you need like a weird switch or a knob or yeah. something random like that. I mean, it's essentially what G&E and &E in our department are. <laughs> <laughs> We need some hot glue back yeah. there. Hot glue, zip ties. <laughs> Monofilament. <laughs> no, so, seriously, because like fancy people tell you it can't be done. Like I talk to like my like like people who build I don't know r rocket ships, for example. I was like, I just need you to hit the button and the neon turns on without a delay. 
And they're like, Psh, no, like, can't be done. But then you call Mike, and Mike's like, bah, child's play. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. You, yeah. yeah, we can always do it. The problem with Corey is that she's like, she sells it as it's just that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We she's can do like, it. She's like, they just need to hit the button, and then the neon turns on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's no problem. We can do that. And then I start doing it, and she goes, and then this other thing needs to happen. <laughs> and then it has to turn off in case someone else does this. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's game show. You said button neon, not this yeah, whole yeah. other shit. That's true. And, and no one I'm else like, is can come on if this I'm button's like, pushed. That's when I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm just patching in other things yeah. into the patch. And I'm just like, at this point, I don't even know how this works anymore. <laughs> but, but we made it work. And then we got a show out of it because yeah. that set was so good. They said it was and the best presentation tape and they'd I ever seen. And I realized from that moment that I never want to work on a game show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a cool game show, though. Yeah, but I hated every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you hate every second of it? Because it was like my hell. It was like, it was literally just like no art to the lighting. Just like light it. And then when I, when so, when I went to the lighting guys, they were like, we can't help you. Oh, those you're union too young. guys. You're like, you're like, you're too young, kid. You haven't seen the shit. And I'm like, oh, those okay. fucking guys. And then I would get yelled at by, because it's like the director would be like, there's not a light in the area. And I'd be like, oh, my God, I fucking hate everything here. I'm so sorry. And then you were like, the neons. And I was like, <laughs> Corey, I'm going to fucking kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. Those those union guys who were like, yeah, let me look. tell you about the time I, uh, and then they name drop all of the things that they've done and then they just want to talk and talk and talk and talk and you know what guys you know what those guys fuck off like seriously stop talking about the time you did the thing with also someone famous. that stage just had super weird vibes because that was glenn beck's old studio oh yeah so it was like you'd walk around and you'd be like this is interesting someone died yeah there. you're like there's definitely dead bodies around here 100 like, percent dead bodies glenn that's where glenn beck buried his bodies but the chris gethard show was next door so it was like good vibes leaking in, being destroyed by Glenn Beck vibes. Is it good vibes? <laughs> <gasps> How dare you? Or are they just the same vibes with different flavors? <laughs> <laughs> you love your industry. I can tell. Yeah. We're great. <laughs> <laughs> you love working in this industry so much. So in this industry, what advice would you offer to the filmmakers out there that are coming in and... Uh, Trying to figure out what they want to do. Hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> Hot glue, monofilament. Um, what advice would, would you I... tell someone to get into this industry? I mean, sure. People like it. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I'm not one of those people at this point in my life who, like, lo like loves it. Like, I'm sorry. No, it's <laughs> that's fine. That's I'm fine. sorry, world. Yeah. I'm not one of those people who's like, ah. Oh, the cinema god. The cinema. Like, I'm, I don't care. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, You're just good at it. because there's so many people in this industry who act like they're doing something really important, like they're curing cancer. They're like saving the world. They're not. No. Like, the one time I almost like completely walked off set because somebody was behaving so badly and it was making it miserable for everybody. It was a tampon commercial. <laughs> I was literally like, this is a tampon commercial. You are not saving the world. You have no right to act this way. Like, stop it. You know what I mean? So, I guess that's that's the advice is don't be an asshole. I guess. Well, I think, like, I it's think, not. I, well, I think the subtext of your message is, you know, don't take yourself too serious in the industry. Yeah. yeah. Right. Enjoy what you're doing. Have fun. Yeah. And like, you know, go with the flow. And be nice to people. Yeah. Everybody's working really hard, <laughs> and everybody is hungry. And everyone is grumpy at some point during the long day and problems are getting solved and everybody's thinking really hard to solve all these problems. So you have to be nice to everybody. There's so many people in this industry who are not nice yes, and it bothers me. And if you want to get into this industry to make money, there's so many better ways to make money than the <laughs> film industry. That is true. With better for, hours. For example. Don't think that getting paid $700 a day that you're like crushing it. Because like <laughs> some guy not. on Wall Street just made seven mil <laughs> yeah. pushing a button. Yeah, exactly. 
The way to make money is to start a really fun merchandise company. You merchandise, and then you create an <laughs> empire around that. And, <laughs> and then you make sure you're still friends with the people who created that empire. In fact, you introduce them so they can <laughs> never break up with you. <laughs> and that is my advice to all you young, young kids out there. Get in early. <laughs> Seriously, no, but for real, like, put yourself in a position where you work with people that get better than you. You're better than me now. You're better. You guys, psh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I just say I know what I'm doing and then figure out how to do it either then or. But that's the, that's mean, the way to do time. it, though, I would too. disagree with you. You're def. I mean, you're better at, like, I couldn't do fucking art department. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm pretty I, good at art I department. Couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't work with, like, you also, you, you, like, have since I've known you, you've always taken dance classes. Like you've That's always true. been a dancer. So whenever there was some dancing component on a shoot, you like knew how to work with dancers to get yeah. them to do stuff. Like I couldn't That's fucking true. do that. that. That's also just part of production. Like it's not just all grip gaffers, you know, camera department. Yeah. There's like a whole other department that makes it all happen. And That's you true. connect these people, mm-hmm. right? That make it happen. Like, so. do you think you could have done the company XIV thing if you didn't have some background in dancing? If I wasn't probably not maybe i don't know maybe. she would have said yes and just i would have been like <laughs> i'm a dancer now <laughs> just watching dirty dancing. the funny thing is the, the company 14 people didn't know i was a dancer like i was working making that stuff for them and then like at one point we all went out and we, the dancing happened and i was dancing and they were like you can act wait what what's happening you're a dancer like what's mm-hmm. going on and i was like yeah they were like oh i get it yeah yeah, that but that's like choreography on. Se- I'm always, I'm always like, I have like peripheral vision on like 100 percent all the time. I'm always, like, I don't know, cause I, I guess cause I used to work with kids and they're squirrely, <laughs> so you have to you have to like really? be paying attention or like I would be like, t- ki- it, like bikes not bombs, like going on bike trips with teenage hoodlums, mm-hmm. like <laughs> I would be like. One of them's gonna take a left, <laughs> and then I'm fucked. Like I always, I'm always watching everything that's going on. I'm the person on set who's like always, always like someone's gonna trip over that. Someone's gonna trip. Someone's yeah, tripping. you are that person. I am that person. I'm always that person who's like, I see a safety hazard. <laughs> like what's happening? And I'm the person who's like. <laughs> I'm like Mike fix that it's called Darwinism <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I don't like to see that happen no it's gonna happen no matter what you can do you know do you get a lot of art department shitty rig submissions I get a few of them I actually get a lot of wardrobe ones wardrobe is yeah I mean, safety oh, pins clothes yeah. pins it's kind of crazy how much like it's barely on there yeah <laughs> It is. It's never actually going to stay on. No. Yeah. It's all double stick. Yeah. That <laughs> one so, is particularly great. Yeah. The butt cheeks for the cleavage. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Have you ever been on a set where like you dropped the word shitty rig and someone was like, let's not put this on shitty rig. Like, please don't put this on shitty rig. No. Everyone. Never? Everyone. Oh my God. Multiple times. Everyone <laughs> wants to be on shitty rigs. Yeah. Are you kidding? Everyone. I've been on set with you and been like, Mike, 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 okay. Mike, come look. <laughs> 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 and you're like. You're like, no. Nah. I'm going to segue this because I was on the Jizza set with you. Oh, yes. And we were doing a shitty rig. And I went and took a picture of it. And then uh, Rufus came up to me and went, you're not going to put that on the internet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the shitty rig? It was... Was it something unsafe for people? They did this camera turn thing. It was like a 360 yeah. camera turn. Yeah. It was total garbage how yeah. we put it together. Yeah. Yeah. You, we had no resources. The, that was like, I oh, know. Right was, now, we'll wait, what, what, turn the camera around. What was the show you guys worked on together that you're talking about? It was called Liquid Science. Mm-hmm. With the Jizza from Wu-Tang. From the Wu-Tang Clan. Mm-hmm. Wu-Tang is for children. Mm-hmm. Um, Tang forever. Yeah, it was It was on Netflix. It was inside the mind of, for those of you who don't know, Jizza from the Wu-Tang Clan is a big science enthusiast. Oh, huge. He's really into science, um, particularly particularly like cutting edge technology, quantum physics kind of science. Right. And so we developed a show with him where he goes to uh, like scientists, scientists and, lo- <laughs> and labs. He goes to like the what is it? The big Haldron Collider or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, go at it, yeah. And then he he you hear his voice over narrating something and then you're inside his head in his imagination. So for like six weeks, we had a big giant 
black, black box, box yeah. studio and we had to recreate like Jizz's imagination with like uh, live animals, like hot glue guns, hot glue guns. monofilament, <laughs> so many kinds of oh. tape. <laughs> there were many, many kinds of tape, like projection. The and, best tape. <laughs> yeah, only the best tape. We built a lake inside the studio that was the shittiest lake ever built. So you I, built a lake? Yeah, no. How do you build a, li- a lake? How don't you build a lake? <laughs> you found this like, <laughs> it was like a, like if a natural disaster happened, like, like someone spilled toxic waste somewhere. It's like a containment pond. Yeah. And that's what you found. It was a 40, 40 by 30, I think. Yeah, 40 by foot like, by 30 by foot. like a foot or two. Yeah, it was like 24 inches deep. Wow. And <laughs> and it had a few holes in it. Yeah. And we had like, we, we built, it had like a, 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 a way of building up the edges, but then the rest we were like, we're gonna need more sandbags. Yeah, it was like, it was like, sandbags. it was like, how many sandbags do we have? They were like, I don't know, like fifty or so. And I was like, we're gonna need. Mm-hmm. So we had like fifty million sandbags holding it up because it kept springing leaks. And I and so we built the thing. And I was like, how do we fill the thing? Like, how, where do we get all this water? So I had to like make friends with the fire department to come and unlock the fire hydrant. And fire hoses like all connected to each other came into the, the building, and we filled it up. Yeah. For one shot. Me and Martine, if you remember from episode yeah. two, filled up the tank. Yeah. With the fire hoses from the fire hydrant that was next to the the, the garbage truck facility. I was like, I can't talk, building a robot. <laughs> Have fun, guys. <laughs> the best part about it was as we're filling it, because they're bringing the trucks back because their shift's over, they're running over the hose. So every time they run <laughs> over the hose, it's like... <laughs> 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 So, like, we didn't know what to fucking do. And, like, me and Martine were just holding the hose, filling this pool. Because you can't let the hose go. You can't the let pressure the ho- would fire <laughs> fucking hose. It just fucking goes everywhere. So we, like, didn't know what to do. So we're, like, we're holding the hose. And then we realize, you know, we're kind of lazy. After about 10 minutes, we're, like, this is fucking boring. We need to come up with a rig to yeah, hold this Yeah, and then you made a shitty <laughs> rig. So we made a shitty rig. It's, like, a muscle cart. And then he started clamping shit. And then we got everything. We put more sandbags. We filled it up, and that's when the problem started happening because we just forgot about it. We were like, good to go, and we walked away. And then all of a sudden, the sidewalls of the pool start, yep. like, bending. Yep. And then you're like, we need sandbags. Like, <laughs> I know. I was like, we're going like, to need a lot. I'll give you, like, two, and you're like, we need a lot of sandbags. <laughs> it was my idea. It was my stupid fucking idea. I was like, can we do this? If we did this digitally, like I love practical effects. If I can make Best, it, if yeah. I can make it practical, I'll make it practical. Yeah. So we needed an old man sitting in a boat in a black lake. I was like, we could do that in post, or we could build it here. We could build it here <laughs> in this studio. We also like lit a tree on fire. Like, like how do we drain that pool? Yeah, that's my next question. How'd you get the water out? We pump it up. I don't know. <laughs> we, I we, sure we did. We pumped, we it, pumped out. it out. There was a sump. A sump <laughs> pump. That's right. I remember. There this was now. a sump pump. We yep. had one pump and we put one. it in, and, and it kept we started breaking. pumping. And then we were like, we need more pumps. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of water. It take to pump that out. It took oh a whole God. day. Almost. Yeah. It was like our. I was like, was it our off day? This is our off. It's day. still pumping. It's still, <laughs> pumping. <laughs> it's still pumping now. It was like it was like a sump pump. It was like this big. It was like. <laughs> And then it would break, and we'd be like, "Fuck!" Because yeah. we had all of our the rest of our set in there, like the whole art. It was all art department. It was like it's we built giant shelves, department. so we couldn't just like let it drain into the floor drain because it was like we got shit in there. <laughs> we couldn't do it. <laughs> that was also the shoot where we got the wh- where that was the shoot where we fell in love with low fog, mm-hmm. with with cold fog. I was obsessed <laughs> with low fog forever. After I was like shoot. Mike for this shot. I want it to look like, you know, the fog on the ground, like the really cold fog, like, and then people walk through it, like they're floating. And, and w- they delivered these giant ass tanks and Mike was like, eh, low fog, whatever. And then it, it's the first time we got it to work, we filled the whole warehouse with like low fog yeah. and it looked amazing. And Mike but was like, it's a bitch to make it work. <laughs> yeah, it It's really a sucks. pain in the ass to get it to like do what you want it to do. Cause if the temperature in the studio is wrong, it's just going to rise. It yeah. has to be like, ice cold in the studio and then your fog has to be cold and then your co2 has to be like the correct amount into the fog wow. yeah 
It was crazy. And it's also like we're all breathing CO2. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had masks. Like there was no ventilation. This was like a, sh this, I mean, that, it wasn't a fancy studio. The studio was next to a super fun site that was being taken down. And on the other side of the super fun site, I mean, on the other side of the studio was the Brooklyn garbage truck depot. Yeah. So like every night all the garbage trucks would come home. Oh, wow. It smelled really good there. Garbage, Ooh. super fun, <laughs> our studio. And that's what happens when you get the big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I want to know about this uh, tree lighting. You lit a tree on fire? Yeah, we had to light, light a tree on fire. So for, for tree, for anything with fire or guns or any like, effects like that safety expert uh, i'm gonna plug i'm gonna plug one company the specialists they're the best the specialists specialists they're fucking fantastic they when you go to the spec like being doing art department is fun sometimes because you get to go to these like weird places and weird props and like weird people yeah. whether you're like renting a convertible pink cadillac for a mu <laughs> oh my god a music drag queen music video and you meet the weirdo who owns all the weird cars or you're going you need a like a gun a realistic gun we did did you work on the shoot with the war and peace no with the gun like i had no. to get all these um period period guns. Yeah. period guns and like a cannon and shit and it was the first time i'd ever had to do that so i was like well, I what do i call and somebody suggested the specialist i was like okay so i go out to the specialists and they have literally it looks like in like a james bond movie when james bond goes into whatever the gearhead guy's name is, and he gives him like his watch that explodes and the gun that, you know, whatever, and the car he's all gonna drive to. and all his weapons. It's like going there. That would it's be like, Q. Q, thank you. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> you know, the weird Bond gearhead guy? <laughs> the, the only smart one in the movie? Yeah. Um, I'm Ben Wishaw. Yeah, I don't know why I remember the actor's name, but I don't remember the character. Anyway, you walk into the specialist and there's literally like a vault of every weapon ever made going up the wall. And like, it's Whoa. just crazy. It's just, it's just weird. They're based here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're armorers and they do special effects. They're like, they blow up things. Cool. And they have a blast. They, that, they have the best job. They love their jobs. They get to like do blowing up car stunts and like fuck yeah yeah. That's so awesome. I called the specialist and I was like, I need to um, burn a tree in a inside <laughs> in a studio. I need to like light a tree on fire and make it explode. And they were like, What time? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, call times like two p.m. Cool. They were like, We'll be there. They were like, Clear the perimeter. They just come in and take care of it. But it was like it was hilarious because it wasn't. It, it was a. It was like a macro shot. So it was, the tree was only like this big. It was like that big. It wasn't like a giant tree inside the, the studio. The fire was huge. The yeah, fire was way bigger. Because it was like because they were ready to burn down an oak tree. Yeah, like. they 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 took it to a, new, a whole new level because it was like this really. It was a phantom shot. It was like super super slow mo, and it was just like slow little sparks coming out. But I mean, in real life, it was like <laughs> we were like Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> did, they have, like, did they have like a bunch of like, I guess like fire extinguishers and stuff on the side? Like what they do? Oh yeah, the, the, all the we safety. We have the pool, dude. Yeah, <laughs> just chuck the pool it in the was pool. still draining. <laughs> The man in the boat in the middle of the pool. <laughs> Use a door. <laughs> no, they had all the safety. That's why you hire them. Because the no, they're the specialists. Nothing goes wrong. But as as far as what they did, I can't reveal the secrets of the specialists. Mm. You can't do that. Can't, they know. They know what they do. Can't do a shitty rig. Can't do a shitty rig with fire. They're amazing. Mm. It's really fun. Yeah, don't do a shitty rig with fire. Yeah. Try to avoid. Or that. electricity. Yeah. Don't or do electricity, it. Or electricity. Because it cause well, it'll yeah. cause a fire. Well, I've done a bunch of those. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. The scariest one was the the pendulum, the giant pendulum. It was like a shot about it, he was Jizza was kind of thinking about time and you know, wormholes and multiple universes and stuff like that. And so it was like a metaphor for time. There's this the whole studio was like the inside of a clock and the pendulum, the the pendulum disc was five feet in diameter so then the then i was like <laughs> and then i need it needs to swing it needs to swing all the way and then all the way back and we're going to shoot in slow motion we had this beautiful dancer and these crazy beautiful low fabrics fog. and low fog low and fog. so she comes through the shot like <laughs> swirling as the pendulum is swinging past her it's totally great and i was like in my brain and i'm like interpretive dancing describing what i want and mike's just going <sighs> <sighs> Give me a card, lady. <laughs> Mike's like, I know. Mike knows what I. Mike knows what I'm talking about. I'm like, Mike, I have an idea, and he's like, Okay. 
I'm going to need like 15 speed rails. Like how many speed rails? You you guys did it with speed rails, right? Yeah. 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 Speed rail. What was it made out of? I can't remember. The disc? The pendulum, yeah. The disc was wood. I I CNC machine That's cut it. Was. Yeah, it was heavy as fuck. It it was heavy, but it could have been heavier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like because it was it, it was, was a disc speed rail up to another thing, and then it's just like essentially, I forgot how we. Sw- I think it was rope. Two cherry, two. Yeah. You had two cherry pickers. Yeah. And Martine was losing his fucking shit because Martine was key grip, and he takes his job very seriously as like the king of safety, and like this was there, not not king of safety moment. <laughs> there was a lot of yelling going on. And Martine was like, Girl, "Clear the perimeter." Um, and then you guys attached at the top, but it it was, it weighed like a billion pounds and it was, it would swing when it was, it would have killed you. Essentially like, you know, she's like, what weighed like maybe 50 pounds the disc or 75 pounds as you get it up. Not that, not, it didn't weigh that much. The pipe. Oh, with the pipe. Yeah. 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 Yeah, With, uh, we were, the ceiling was fucking high there. It was like 18 foot ceilings. So we're coming down with speed rail to her disc and then it's going up and as was, you're bringing it up you're realizing oh, it's like getting no. heavier as <laughs> it's going up and then you're just like let it go <laughs> oh my god like it could have killed a lot of people <laughs> cuz it was also it was like this close to the ground that was the best part is it was like that when it would swing Definitely down it didn't need it, to be that close it looked like <laughs> but it did because it cut through the low fog it was like and the low fog would go and then the oh, dancer yeah. came through and it was so, it was so amazing. It was so beautiful because the, it had to be, I, I had to like tromp loyal paint it to look like it was catching like a reflection because it couldn't be metal because it couldn't catch a real reflection because that would be annoying yeah. to gaff, the gaffers Everybody of the world and everyone. It. So it had to be like non-reflective, but look like it was polished brass. Like it was, it had to be like that. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. That's fine. <laughs> it was really, really cool. And then it took so long to get set up, and it was stressing everybody out so much because we were like, we're going to die. If this falls and someone's in the way, they will die. Like, it was crazy. And we finally had the shot set up, and the dancer, Tara, was, like, rehearsing. And I was like, if she, like, steps to the left, we had to lens it right because if she stepped too close to it, she would get taken out and, like, Gone. cut in half. And that would have been bad. So I mean, there were safety measures to stop it, but how fast we could stop it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. And we were like, it's going to work. But then we, we got the shot all set up, and everyone was so stressed out, especially the director. The director was losing it he, that day. He was just, like, so stressed out. And he was like, everybody needs to pay attention to me. Like, we got to do this. We got to do this. And um, love you, Adrian. You're the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then... W- I had I had I brought a sound system with a record player because we like lived there, so I brought a bunch of records in and whatever. We had this big huge sound system that we would play while we were working, and so it was all quiet on set. And like, Adrian called action, and then as soon as the dancer came in, and there was this wind machine. Remember the wind machine? Yeah, that's what I was operating. Yeah. <laughs> Mike was operating the biggest wind machine. It was like an airplane engine. Like a, it was like it's like an eight foot fan. It was oh huge because we had to have her costume trail, like. 10 feet we had to have like yeah you know it was like alexander mcqueen fashion show like the the trail of the fabric had to go way way out and it was uh, as soon like he he said action and tara stepped forward in the wind machine went and i and i hit play on and i I (laughs) will always love you it went to houston and everybody lost their shit including tara except adrian he got really mad (laughs) the director got really really mad but it was so funny Guys, it was funny. Every day on that shoot, I would just be like, I have no fucking clue what's going to happen. And a truck would show up, and I'd be like, what's in this truck? And then all of a sudden, it'd just be like, waterfall. And you're like, okay. Oh, right. it's just, waterfall. It's, just, it's literally Corey coming to the back of the car and saying, all right, Mike, I have an idea. <laughs> like, it just, new, shit, new shit showing up every day, and then Corey would, like the fan, she'd show up. She showed up with this fan. I'm like, I'm <laughs> like, she's like, I need to plug in a fan. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, sure. Like, up anywhere. And then, and then I see the fan. I'm like, oh fuck! This is like, <laughs> this is not a fan, dude. Like, this requires three phase power. We yeah, don't have she, any of this I was shit. Like, I need to. I should have said I need to tie in a fan. She's like, where do I plug these in? I'm like, oh my god, no. 
<laughs> Stage yeah. yeah. Sorry. Like, Mike, hear me out, Mike. Hear me out. <laughs> and then one day off the truck came an ostrich. Remember mm-hmm. the ostrich? We had a giant ostrich. Angry, angry, angry. A very ostrich. angry ostrich. And those motherfuckers are dinosaurs. It's <laughs> insane. Like trying to hold it back with the cage thing. Yeah, it was like. Wait, what? Yeah. Well, there was a shot about there was this something. Like you're gonna bypass the fact that there's an ostrich on set. Like how'd you get an ostrich on? It the was set? really funny too, cause like, it's an ostrich farm. People, have you ever eaten ostrich? No. It's fucking mm-hmm. delicious. It's it's lean. Oh, I sound like Princess Bride when the mutton's nice and lean. <laughs> <laughs> when the ostrich is nice and lean. Um. No, it's delicious. Anyway, it's an ostrich farm. So we the shot was about like evolution. The show the the show was about evolution or something. You know, dinosaurs, birds, and so we had to get all these shots of ostrich feet and like feathers and how they walk and di- you know dinosaurs. And the os- the truck comes and the ostrich comes in. The- that thing was fucking ten feet tall. So big. It was so much bigger than I could have possibly imagined, and it had a it had a hood on it. And the farmer came in and he was like, you're going to want to not move, talk, don't make eye contact. (laughs) It was like it was a raptor. Like, don't do any, like, don't move. And we were all like, oh, my God, can we take a picture? It's just this (laughs) massive (laughs) scene of bird ready to crush you with a hood on its head. No spoilers. Everyone's trying to get, like, a a selfie with it. Everyone was, like, so (laughs) excited. And the farmer was like, you don't understand. Everything you know and love will be destroyed if you agitate this bird. And we were like, oh, okay. (laughs) Took the hood off. It's just like everything else. It's just like the art department. We had, like, 15 seconds before before it all fell apart. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was crazy and we had a horse named spaghetti and then the but the waterfall was the coolest the waterfall i was like i want to project video onto falling water for this shot and and i called all these places and i was like here's what i want to do and they were like can't help you <laughs> like what are you talking about and then finally we figured out how to get like enough bubbles like how to like force air into the mixture so it looked white when it would come down and then we were projecting on it, and then somebody walks through it. It's really cool. I thought you were going to say the ostrich walks through it. No, no, the ostrich walks through it. Then they go to the ostrich. Corey part. rides no. the ostrich through the waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> glue gun. I'm shooting glue guns. <laughs> well, how, do you, how did you do the, the waterfall thing? It was this company that does them for, like, you know, uh, like buildings who want, like, a water feature, Uh huh. you know, or, like, a yeah. living plant wall with, like, water. Mm-hmm. You know, people want, like, something nice. So it's, like, permanent stuff. They, like, do, like, dis- events and things, yeah. you know. Um, and I called them, and I was like, I got this crazy idea, guys. <laughs> and, like, it ha- <laughs> I'm just nuts. <laughs> I had to get, like, such a such a high-powered projector to do it, too, because we had to be far enough away mm-hmm. to do it. Wow. Like, it was... Once again, I need to plug in a projector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always doing something with a projector. What was the what was the shot with the ostrich? That was just like close up shots of feet and the, oh, the ostrich feet. feet just like, and then like animation of dinosaur feet. Oh, you know, it just like all tied together with evolution. That's pretty sick. Yeah, but we did that pendulum shot with two kids in the foreground too. Remember that? Mm-hmm. That was crazy. <laughs> two kids? <laughs> you had someone agree to put their child in front of a Jennifer 50 Brogel. pound. Pendulum swinging past. Yeah, Nima started sixth you think grade. That's the worst thing I've done with kids. No. Oh my god, <laughs> there's many stories. <laughs> kids are the day. best. Wow, that was the shoot too. Where it- that's when you realize, man, parenting is very different for some people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're very lackadaisical. Yeah, I thought like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was intense. Yeah. There was. That was the time that. Um, that was the shoot that the whole series there was supposed to be this magical object that was so like a kid was supposed to hold this magical object which was supposed to be like a quantum object like representing like the future of quantum technology and blah 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 and i was like what the fuck does that look like <laughs> and i was like i don't like know and so i found this 3d printer and we like designed this thing and it was supposed to represent all these things and it took like a couple weeks to like design something super super cool and the day came up for the sh- for that shoot and it was like we don't have it it got lost in the mail the magical object that was designed to represent oh. the future of quantum technology is lost in the <laughs> like the postal service fucked up and i was like what do we do and adrian was like we got to do something and i was like 
looking around, looking around, looking around. And like way in the back of the studio, there was like an old HVAC system that had gotten torn out but not tossed yet. So I went over and I like like sawzalled the <laughs> like the the top off of it and like reached inside and pulled out like a condenser of some sort, like something. I don't know what it was. It had like a million layers. It was a filter. My, it wasn't a. It was a. It was metal. It might have been a filter, but it was like square and it had like a million layers. It was really weird. I pulled that out and I was like, transformer. Yeah, it was a like transformer. I was yeah. like, hmm. And then I went over to my bench and got some LED like fairy lights and twisted them all inside and turned it on. I was like. There it is. <laughs> the, the future of quantum tech. What do you think? And Adrian was like, it's beautiful. <laughs> wow. I was like, yeah, totally super high tech. Like a, you don't a, turn it off yourself. Like yeah. you need a, someone a lot of time trained. to make that. And the shot it. is like this little kid holding it up going like, whoa. And it actually looks really fucking cool, but it's literally like air conditioner guts and some fairy lights. <laughs> Like made at the very last minute. I totally forgot about that. Oh my That's god. That's a shitty rig if I've ever heard of That was a shitty rig. I mean, if, rig. On the if you're going somewhere with the Sawzall, it's starting off good. Yeah. Sawzall? <laughs> if I had to list favorite, like, it, like essential power tools, mm. specifically mm. power tools, Sawzall's on there. Oh, absolutely. Concrete drill. Concrete drill? Can't get, you just do the anything Hilti? with that fucking thing. Nail gun. Yeah. I like nail guns. Uh, you can get I don't use a nail gun very often. Oh, I just pull back the little handle of it so you can just shoot it at people. Oh, yeah? Who do you shoot it at? It's my confession. <laughs> <laughs> well, for someone who's feeling like they could probably leave the film industry, you sound like you've had a good time working in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's because it's, it's different every time. That's true. That's true. If it was the same every day, mm -hmm. like, you know, doing the ostrich thing yeah. is cool. Yeah. But if you had to do the ostrich thing yeah. every fucking day, fucking you would be like, I'm fucking done with the ostrich. I know. Everyone was like, what's his name? And the farmer's like, uh, number 16. <laughs> <laughs> like Oscar the ostrich. Like meat 10. <laughs> oh my God. Meat 10. The little kids are traumatized. <laughs> yeah. It was really funny. You're telling them how good ostrich tastes to little kids. <laughs> but New York is the best for, for production design, for art department stuff. Because, like, the street provides. Yeah. There's, like, always something on the street. Someone's always getting rid of something. Someone's always throwing something. Oh, so yeah. you, yeah. you don't always have to trash everything. You can, like, donate. Or, or like, there's this, there's this organization called Art Cube, which is where you, like, post your set. You're like, okay, we're wrapping out. I've got like 25 flats i have like oak flooring for some fucking reason somebody decided they wanted oak for the floors but you could just fake it like i have like a ball i got rid of a i got rid of a 40 foot diameter ball pit full of balls once on art cube like someone called i was like like striking i have a <laughs> ball pit with like seven million like plastic balls inside three colors and like the 20 minutes later, someone was like, I can come pick it up right now. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's, it's crazy. So it like recycles itself, which is really good. And New York's also full of fucking weirdos it's who true. have weird shit. Yeah. And weird. then you get to meet those weirdos and yeah. do weird so things. So it doesn't always go in the trash. Sometimes someone will pick it up off our, our cube. If you plan ahead, and that's my other advice to all you youngsters out there, all you producers out there, plan ahead. Plan for your breakdown. Remember when we had to chop the, the train up? Remember we built... Like t we took two weeks to build a custom train set, a train that went oh, like at shells. through mountains oh, and yeah. valleys and there were tunnels and it was like had a back. It was gorgeous. It was amazing. But we didn't we, we only had a certain amount of time to build it. And we were like, let's get going. Let's get cracking. Paper mache. Ah. And then when it came time to break it down, we didn't engineer it to be broken down so we could. And I was like posting all I was like Craigslist, like amazing custom train set. Anyone? <laughs> and like. We couldn't get rid of it, so we had to literally like sawzall. Like, oh, <laughs> it was so sad. Oh, oh my god, I remember that. Train. It's so wasteful. Our industry is very wasteful. Yeah. So plan ahead. It's not the most wasteful though. There are more wasteful things, but it's pretty fucking wasteful. Yeah. Like think about it. Think about how many water bottles you like. I'm gonna have a sip and then put it down. Yeah. And don't put your name on it. Individual containers for food at like lunch. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or those little tiny water bottles that are like this big. I understand. I totally get what you're saying. It's probably not the most wasteful, but it's still pretty wasteful. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah. It's really wasteful. Yeah. That's why you should book Earth Angels. <laughs> you were like the best promoter for everyone. Donate your shit <laughs> to Housing Works when you're done. It's true. That's four. That's four plugs. It's right? just so much plugs. work. It's so much work at the end of a shoot where you're like, Another I'm job. so tired. It's a whole yeah. other job to like get yeah. rid of your shit. Yeah. And it's sad. And you can't keep everything, as you know. Well, you've given a lot of great advice on set today, Thanks. Corey. Um, we want I, ca I count this as set. I think we're on set. Um, I think <laughs> this is the best set ever. Yeah, this is great. I mean, what? Oh, oh we didn't of, ask. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? What do you of think? The shitty rig set the as shitty a production designer. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to know too. It could be shittier. <laughs> <laughs> like, for example, this this lamp thing here, mm -hmm. like that doesn't have to be straight. You know, oh. you can make that not straight really easily. You know, like blowtorch. <laughs> no, it should just be like. Alan, can we get the? It should the look torch? like it's about to fall over, and you had to tie it to the wall with m monofilament. Oh shit! You know, like you. Could I do, do that. need a good hot glue gun because I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Do you have a holster for yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, are you kidding? She's like, yeah. have you met me, Michael? <laughs> you know, you know. Which holster? She's like, is this? <laughs> yeah. Isn't this America? Please. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, I have like the samurai sword kind where I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You open carry like kill bill. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. It's a concealed the carry. The bandolier was like it's the glue. concealed carry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess on that note, we'll tell everybody at home to look out for our set next week uh, or mm -hmm. next show because I know Corey might give us some ideas to change some stuff up. Yeah. Just um, go to like a random uh, like. Call up uh, what you might call it. We'll do it. Art thing or just art cube. Art cube. Yeah. We should Seriously. Just look them up and find some random shit. Just put it in. You have to be a member, but oh. I think I know. I know. I, I might be able to get you in. I could just keep you informed. Yeah. Of the because there's some shit that goes on, like Horror weird shit. Show, yeah. An electric chair. Do you want an electric oh, chair? There was yeah. an electric chair on Art Cube the other day. Yeah, we can. Like that. realistic 1940s wow. jail electric chair. So I want to die on it because I don't want that. <laughs> I mean, no, it's I, a prop. It's a prop. Okay. It's a prop. I still want it. It was custom built. It was All a prop. Right. You take that home. I still want that. Yeah. You don't want yeah. that shit here. <laughs> Uh, but honestly, thanks, Corey, for being on the show. You're we welcome. Fucking love having you. You got you're awesome. It was really good to see it, like the <laughs> art department side of it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Compliments are hard. <laughs> it was awesome having. You. I'm like, what? It was great. Yeah, it was so much fun. Like getting to hear. I never. I I personally never hear a lot of the stories of what happens like on the art in the art department side. Yeah, like I just. Art department usually gets kind of shoved over yeah you do but, but it's like, super important it's it is the most important. Important. it also doesn't ever get budgeted someone's always like there's no art on this though and i'm like there's always art yeah. like i don't care what job it is i was just on a job i was just on a job i was like let's talk about the art department they were like there's no art on this and i was like let's talk about the art department there's no art on this guess what there was fucking art on the job and the three hours before the shoot we someone had to run around and go find some stuff for art department it happens every time. There's always art. Every time. Every time. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Even if it's like a stool for some, for your guest to sit on or something. There's yeah. always something. Seriously. Yeah, there's always seriously. something. And I think it gets overlooked. And I'm glad we had you on the show because I think it's very important to see that. I personally never seen it before. So I think it's really cool. Overlooked and under budgeted. Overlooked and, and you, under budgeted. The art department, my memoir. <laughs> 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 Overbooked and underpaid. Overlooked and underpaid. The yep. cards, it's Arctic story. I get to do weird, fun shit though, like go smash car windshields for research. Like I had to, I had to create, I had to, I had to do a shoot where I had to make it look like somebody ran someone over and their head smashed the windshield. It, it was a hypothetical. <laughs> We've all learned that word today. It was mm -hmm. hypothetical, but I had to make it look like that happened. So I was like, what would, what do I, what would make that happen? Oh, a kettlebell. So I was like, if I hit it with a kettlebell, it will look like a head. So I called this random junkyard in Queens and I was like, hey guys, um, I, okay, I'm a, I'm a production designer. <laughs> My name's Corey. <laughs> and I did this thing and I started explaining. He was like, it's 10 bucks cash and hung up. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't even finish. Like, how does he know what I want to do? I was like, oh. so I like go to this junkyard in Queens and I was like, hi, I'm Corey. <laughs> I was like, I spoke to John, or like whatever his name was. And he was like, 
And I was like, do you guys take cards so I could get the company? And no, okay, never mind. And I just gave him 10 bucks and I, I went out into the, the backyard of, this, of the junkyard, the backyard of the junkyard. Thing is I went there. out into the junkyard, <laughs> lots of cars, and I had this kettlebell, and I literally like, put on some safety glasses, and then just practiced smashing windshields for like what? an hour until I had it perfect. I was like, mm, that's the sweet spot. Ten, <laughs> bucks. ten bucks each time? Ten bucks. <laughs> ten bucks each time. No, ten just ten bucks. bucks. Ten bucks cash. This is phenomenal. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> All yeah. the windshields you could smash? All the windshields I could smash for ten bucks. Oh, with trip. a kettlebell. School cool. trip. We're that sounds like a, sh a <laughs> shitty rigs yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. field trip. It's a field trip. Yeah, yeah we're going to go do that. Shitty rigs outings. <laughs> we're going to go. We did tie GoPros to us and start smashing shit. It was, it was near the specialists. I had to go to the specialist that day to look at guns for this shoot. And then I was like, I'm just going to stop by this junkyard on the way through. I just remember being so polite and trying to like be official. And they were like, 10 bucks. <laughs> You're the third person today. Get Ten bucks. And like the yeah. weirdest weirdos who like you don't. They were they were like, don't look in any of the trunks. And I was like, okay, I don't need to know. They didn't say that. I made that up. <laughs> but it was so fun. Oh man, Corey, thanks again. You really killed it. You're and welcome. I seriously thank you. You just opened up the production side of a lot of things for me. Like I can't reach yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm air fist. Air fist. <laughs> Put a little bit of that string between it. Like. <laughs> hot glue. Hot glue. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I should I should get you a hot glue gun to hang on the wall because hot glue that. is the ultimate shitty you tool. Have to, you yeah. have to sign it for us too. Yeah, yeah, I would love yeah. that okay. holster and everything. Yeah, yeah. it'll work out. <laughs> the holster is made with hot glue. <laughs> like you hot glue the fabric <laughs> together. <laughs> together. So you have no idea. I can't wait to learn. From it's covered in stuff. glitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you surprised got... we didn't talk about any glitter stuff. Yeah, uh, it's just Fuck everywhere. Glitter, <laughs> so over glitter. <laughs> There's fucking everywhere. It's everywhere. We worked on a show with drag queens constantly. I, I used to direct music videos for drag queens for a show for a living. Like everything. You were constantly covering glitter. glitter. Speaking of love, drag queens loved Mike. Yeah, you just have a thing. <laughs> they love me. I'll have to say that for the next the next time Corey comes back. She yeah. can tell us about how much drag queens love Mike. Totally. Oh, they really do. <laughs> totally. They really do. <laughs> But I want to get at least one good rap here. So thank you so oh, much, yeah, Corey, rap. for uh, being a part of our, our um, rap drinks episode this, this week. Um, we look forward to having you again on the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Literally Peace. anytime. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Corey. That's it. We're done. We're done. We did it. We did it. Holy shit, you guys. You had nothing to talk about. Yeah.